Welcome to Overflowing Wisdom with John C. Let us not miss your plan. Let your mind, O oh Lord, be our minds this evening. Let your thought patterns become our thought patterns. Program our minds with your thought this evening. As we receive your word, as we receive your word. Anything in us, so Lord, that may hinder us from having full benefit, full advantage to the truth of your word. O oh Lord, we decree it uprooted. And we proclaim that our hearts are cultivated and that activated to receive from you. Let there be divine activations from deep within our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be deep activations that prepares us to us God, that prepares us to us his purpose, that prepares us to fulfill his perfect will. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so it's a good evening to depend upon the Holy Ghost for prayer. Oh, the Bible says, and you beloved, building up yourself in the most holy faith and then praying in tongues, praying in the spirit uh, is a good time to depend upon the Holy Ghost for prayer for he is the ultimate giver of prayer he is the ultimate giver of prayer and this evening we can depend upon him uh, and so that uh, our heart uh, can be in sight with the heart of the Father so that our spirit uh, can be in perfect divine harmony with the spirit of the Father so that we can draw accurately from Zion this evening uh, so you may wish to lay a prayer before the Lord God of heaven. The Bible says unto him that answers prayer shall all fresh come unto him that answers prayer. And the reason why we draw closer to him this evening is because we have the assurance. We have the clarity that he answers prayer. 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 And so you can have your heart activated, fully dependent upon him for strength and for grace this evening. We bless you, Holy Ghost. We bless you, Holy Ghost. For we don't know how to pray. But the Spirit of God giveth us prayer. And he opened us in our infirmities. For we don't know how to pray. But the Spirit of God maketh prayer for us with the glonings that cannot be uttered. Oh, to pray. We must receive your assistance, Holy Ghost. And this is the assistance we seek for this evening in the name of Jesus. We seek your assistance. We seek your assistance, Holy Ghost. We seek your help. We seek your help this evening. Oh, we are your dependent, fully your dependent. We are your dependent, Holy Ghost. So we depend upon you for prayer. Zomi lambris kapatali zade veve lambo sakapia embetolo zadambris kopeli zalimeta venans apeno de montalia praskomi levizua gamba is a wonderful evening to seek the Lord in prayer to seek the Holy Ghost that He may come. The Bible says, "This is the time to seek the Lord until He comes, until we see Him face to face." Until his life becomes our lives, until his all in all becomes our all in all. Kembres commande fella pratozosi fella prakataya. Embenosa de fresco palazo zi amatalia pali. Kebendo pras come sante fefele prai. Jundem bolasi mikale felambre to mezizia vela capane. Kedivendo belusa fele prato jajumbri kapahavenai. Isande petalia prakombisus kapaya. Azebe dambe no fefala pratole jumbelia parai. Akipende tefelasco praskomia vatali jujibina. Imbedua taponan sapri quatoleis. Injede vele kaparans. Epetalembe lo sopalia bidambe do kopate. Imosia velambe lia tamenan sakapeli. Prenso paloza de vele pratona Izun sali prigadem petala vanaza zania Epelia kobenas kondem bolu satolia Apras komia tale vezin semia kabena Indembe no topo sali ambila katai Apres komo sili vivale metolia debe kapena Imbi jujume soso fele pratale Apendo kiduma katomelia vunis Jumbo saifalia metambe dua patataya Zunia Sali meke bia tombe juli varaso si piatani. Aprendo penosa pela leviju abahantani. Ependo skapoli ziviri ya matia. Empeko dome nosa fakamotua. 
Jumbe Nusa Fende Patwa Lavena, Ezeme Kapia da Vertalia, Jimbi Nigidimi Nakatela, Abinu Dume Nusa Fellow Motolia Praquaya, Apinju Sepe Petena, Efide Mecambras Cometale Junji, Efedo Macatamelo Sapele Venina, Idan Solemo Tale Sakai Pali, Ambneno Sadam Preovalai, John Tombolisa Filimi Katamena, Apindu Dometone Police Copilia, Ifende Petano Sazave La Cape, Apeno Sadavres Cometua, Jumpo Notalia, Aprendo Selepia Talila, Escambe No Fedame Natala, Abinu Jumbe Nese Fedame Italia, Aikabena Jegelo Veluso Comela, Ipondo Satolo Mojum Brava Natalia, Pele Kembenu Gile Vagan, Agibendo Tomoconde Paraski, Zeme Tombalo Saparata, Embeluju, Me Governance Cadavaratani, Abinu Alende Frinu Jumila Vatale, Epelekia Panansko de Viatana, Jumbo Sipela, Epracaton Sopelai Farana, Zande Peleia Tania, Ikrin de Felansko Patua Bajuna, Emesa Sifile Pratane, Bendu Aronotolia Paras, Apilia Capena, Escande Metile Jagine, Enjujo Mesopalate, Vendom Petu Pelai, Aprequato Mesusque, Vele Megatore Branos Cadela, Elinjo Televarata, Ben Socopia Papa, Ambeno Sada, Epreton Bejuli, Fecomotolia Prason Selai, Endonetalia, Pracaya Bay, Segomentu Varos, Strandan us and we will be strengthened. Comfort us and we will be comforted. Oh, energize us and we will be energized. Enlighten us and we will be enlightened. Illuminate us by your truth and we will be illuminated. Emporu Zakapi, Zeganeme Kataya, Afindem Benu Salavaratai, Jumo Combres Kapa, Sande Filameto Brasuna. We are aware of our limit. We are aware of our power. Boundaries, but we come to seek you the boundaries once. We are aware of our limitations, but we come to seek you, O oh God. You that is vast, more than the ocean. You that is vast, more than vastness itself. We come to seek you for truth. We come to depend upon you. Because unless you help us, we are helpless. Unless you help us, we are miserable. And so we depend upon you this evening. Men don't praise copilas. Etele me kinde filansa, jumo kobono sa velo parana. Eli juato alia di beno sa pale. Embre kwa Thomasos keve lagadai. Enjune jele prakembe, bedum benu sa felamro kopai. Isale me tande, dempe na kaya mahavana. Anjile ki dembe ta felas. Apre kwa Thomobo ma avidembe na. Ichu paransa felate, apele so kompelai. E prato me debe Nedetia, Jimbelas kopo patai, Amosile pelane, Dembe nuwa jumbras kopetaya, Zame gebeli afranos, Embe toro badun sakia, Ege jun jimbelas kopatana, Zabe bekende pata, Ambre kwa patombe susafela, Ijebe nantoli adamona file, Seme kaipa alela, Emanto me dume nucha vale, Zamfe ke pepi atakapa, Abumbe dupa patana, Zabe Prosco pepetia, in sadi vika pena, a rock tombe luju mi capia, in sadi mitalia veno junge, ambesu a capai, e paranto zazali, jembe sakaya, e pendo perasco metane, jumbo sope la varate, si me capela, e gembe dua vanana soske velai, moto benunju je pelape, e fede metatando salia, ai palunjo me camena, e fele so saia, a Rantan de Pepe Pani, Vecom Belusa, Filia Peli, Itanjua Kamina, Egebende Sakai, Antro Combelusa Pepela, Efenta Pone Zadai, Apres Comila Vatalia, Jemia Davini, Bilu Capo, Aprato Junge Meliske, Evende Matalia Pilan, Zamegelia Paraske, Epete de Pembana, Apres Copila Catua, Apres Comedia Vatani, Jimbe sa fele ke pia, tapopabe bensa, 
inji dimila kapia apras kome tove la sini unju abaransa meli ya junosko evila kome tove laske zamimbe da beta kia apres kopa Holy Ghost zalabadando filende sakai zalevelanso filende zante filanso filando prahazana just make your hearts cream before him so that with all the expectations we can receive from God so that with all the expectations we can hear the heartbeat and the agenda of God this evening his word is exalted forever his word is eternal his word is glorious and the Bible says his word shall never return to him empty void but his word shall accomplish the purpose that it is sent for. The psalmist says this in Psalms 119 verse 96. He says, I have seen an end to all perfection. Psalms chapter 119 verse 96. He says, I have seen an end to all perfection. But your commands are boundaries. I have seen an end to all perfection. I have seen a limit to all perfection. But then he says, but your word, O Lord, is boundless. But your word, O Lord, is limitless. But your word, O Lord, has no limitations. He says, to all perfection, I see a limit. But your commands are boundless. To all what humanity can define as perfection. The psalmist says, there is a limitation to every uh, perfection that is gained by human knowledge, by worldly standard. But then he says when it comes to the word of God, to the truth of God's words, he says the truth of God's words has no limitations. The truth of God's words is boundless. The truth of God's words has no obscurity. The truth of God was meet with no with, with no darkness. He says to every perfection there is a limitation. But there is one single perfection that is limitless. And this is the perfection that is beyond the liam of time. It is the perfection that is beyond the zone of man's calendar. It is the perfection that is unto eternity. And that perfection is the treasured possession of the word of God. And so he says, I have seen an end to every perfection. We are living in a world where humanity is striving to perfect on different things, to perfect on charisma, to perfect on intelligence, to perfect on prowess, to perfect on all manner of accomplishment. But then the word of God is clear that all these perfections are in as good as they may look like, they have limitations. But we have a treasure of eternity that is the word of God that has no limitless. There has no limitations. Uh, there has no boundaries. And this evening we can cling uh, unto this unfailing well of eternity. There has no boundaries. And does the Lord, uh, as He shares the Zadibi to us, that our heart will be clinged uh, to this treasure that has no limitations uh, by the enablement of the Holy Ghost uh, who searches the heart of the Father and reveal it unto us that our spirit will cling to this unfailing well uh, that has no boundaries there has no limitations eh? and so you may wish to ask the father in you may lace a prayer to god and ask him oh lord god uh, you that is the lord god that is limitless you that is the custodian of the truth uh, that as is as is perfection is to eternity grant that we will be acquainted uh, with the perfection of your word uh, we depended upon many things uh, and they have failed uh, time has proven them long uh, but we can depend on the truth of god's was uh, that is beyond time uh, that is beyond mortality that is beyond the understanding of men uh, we can depend on this through this evening uh, and receive strength uh, and receive grace and receive enlightenment and receive quickening uh, and receive empowerment uh, the psalmist says uh, in psalms 119 verse 50 he says and this is the comfort in my affliction for your word has quickened me up we cry for quickening up this evening we cry that he may quicken us up. We cry that he may quicken us up. This is the comfort in our friction. For your word has revived us. Your word has revived us. Holy Ghost, bring 
I revive them from deep within our hearts and begin to enlarge us from within this evening in the name of Jesus begin to enlarge every one of us from within as many as come into contact with this fountain of your truth with the horse of your truth begin to build them from within begin to build us from within begin to enlarge us begin to increase our capacity so that we can contain your truth so that we can be callous of your presence so that we can distribute your presence begin to enlarge us from within oh lord god and learn just from within and learn just from within and learn just from within increase our capacity to call your presence increase our capacity to host you increase our capacity to be fully aligned with your truth to be fully in sync with your internal purpose for your word says that your internal purpose says shall never be thwarted for your counsel standeth forever your counsel is everlasting so we ask of you and learn just from within and learn just from within Pale kambeda selebe lambre sukai kile vembo satande zode mo kambelis imbri kwatosi kapala fembe sosale de prono seleviatal kli jumbo los sakame ta venis dila ambela komo sile fresombe lai te de velambra na jumbri skopilambe esali atore mokobi vedan Ilan sekepe vatamboni Jundombe lusa kabetali sekivina Embre kwa mosili vilan Tali adombe Pransola tomezi zililvana gama Ekombe nusa de vilambro selila Zekembe tombo sisila Aprenso pilante levi abano Jombro kotolezi kevinde Aminju vesu safelai Lezente Fredo Menetalia, Prakwambe Nosadi, Zun Salifra Komotomelia Zana, Ikembela Sofelai, Gentembarasa da Varamakani, Ekili Jumbras Kovatali, Mosa Velombra Noli Atali, Jiko Medoverambo Sisifilai, Epiatali, Kebenans, Kindem Felaka Praskoma, Zompo Saleve Latape Apenu, Adom Prequatome Sane, Ife. Elim brakwa topeska sami adada vembeni sakave e prince koto mazuza apolin sakavela e palante de viantane junjem priko valahaskela e le saya de vilambe topena aprakwamba tomela safakame e pia tali junjem esali adavana kai ikumba no safa umbra zali e le zosa venda prana tole meji avagan ikumba no same tale badun Salim prequatam basaya Esemi kavinu aparas Zonten sofri kwa palazena Elenze dia Kabe noto meri avanun sofili prakalia Benkombe dua papata Epelin zagivi kabona jumpe lise Zete parante pelavo Aprakwan sosile Impe sateva Jindom prenosile prataya Zame kevenam benus Jundom prasko pelai faran Tam Peleke pia gabeno Ajumbe sosko velomo tobe Prando melisa filia pratona Zepe kapaya Ampre kwa tome nuncho za vila pratari Zambe da apai Apile mbe tuwa paran Epuano felai savania Ekrento pelas Ekrento pelas Ekrento pelas Mikambe da vela kataya Ijumbe so kapaya Afrans kome tuwa Jumbe nsolia farana Lisa Zonde parata mekai Epelans kepelando faran Jumi sumfra zobe lavatali Kebinende legi avaran Emenan satome junje praka Epalon sapaya tavanaya Zande prekwa tomelanda pahalia Injaka mela farama tavina Imposalia prete kedia Linju waga benanjom velua prakome savia Ebenontolia domeno jujumara avantania Apilia dombena epepe Zakaipa tondonus Zomo konfelua prasaya 
Zemetalia Paran, Epilansko Paya, Efeda Batano Mejunche Pelaski, Limizagia Varagatua Coben, Juanto Robenua da Veremenia Savia Capena, Ependo Toto Pras, Minjum Presca Paragataya, Apilunjusco Felai, Ebenjuta de Venezila, Mekebelegadia, Imparato Mecume, Dumpo Safelanto Pronua, Jumpa Sepecatai, E Juan de Vela Maragadai, E Quano Savela, E Metombros Cavel, Jintom Velasca da Batani, E Paros Copendo Velai, Sametambela, E Praca Domena Vala, Jembresco Belagatua Cobenans, Umbano Safilia, A Pretua de Benegedia Parans, Zaken Tempilo Covara, Jumbo Sofele Metani, A Bibina Domeno Avulu Abaras, Zaminta Pela, A Pela Mecambana, Amosande Fela Pratola, Supo Capa, A Prento Pelasque Velia Gapan, Entua Domenan Solia, Presco Milan de Fila Mataria, Alinju Jumia Sovri, Combeno Saka, Egerempe Tocopa, Bendua Papatai, Abinua Tombelo Saki, Seme Cabanatai, E Predominanza Fili, En Pelo Parati, Lizo Cape, E Felen de Penesos of Veria Matari, Juan Palua Copenas Keveragatai, Kimbi Ju Jemeskivi, Ingimi Adamo Natomo no Sili, Jumo Beve Kimi Atana, Azondo Pratia Mecale, Egembe Capaya, Abinun Deve La Bosa Batua, Jumu Felimbri Quatavena, Sami Ebebe, Ebebe Macambena, Efana Solia Don Topo, Apopotom Pella, Impraqua Tocopia, Scambia Gepe Tacapua, and then Felim Balus, Jucombo Topepa, Felemeketia Banos, Zapelanton Pelis, Impraquan Topele Zagaya, and Menesande Pelacatua, Jumbos Cape, Efefe Tatua and Ochua, Junje Levelanske, Saimatamia Devena Braca, Egemenum Banu Safa, Ambia Tua Domi Avini, Jacapaya, Fende Parasco Via Gataya. Give us the bread of heaven, O Lord, we cry. Sunday far, ground us on your heart. Ground us on your truth. Let us be fully grounded. Let us be fully looted. Let us be fully built up in your truth. Let us be fully established in you, Jesus. Forgive us when we have sought establishment from other avenues, from other sources that have fall, fall, proven to fail with time. This hour we cry, we lift a holy cry. Oh Lord God, if only you can establish us in your truth, if only it can be unto us according to your word, according to your promises. If only it can be unto us. According to your word, according to your truth. If only it can be unto us according to your word, according to your truth. So we wait on you, Holy Ghost. Prakam Bilaske Vilande. Pele Devine Prasosi. Salande Filos. Kilena Vena Havelo Prakombe Sakan. We wait on you, Lord. Oh, Holy Ghost. For we cannot know you by ourselves unless you take over us. Unless you help us know you, we can't know you by ourselves. We have come into realization and acknowledgement that what we know is so little. Compared to the vastness that you are willing to pour unto us, if only we can yield. We are aware that what we know is like a drop on the ocean compared to what you are willing to reveal and teach us. As your church. As a nation, we have come into that acknowledgement that what we know is tiny compared to what you're willing to share to us. I want us to take that 
of the verse that you just read in Psalms 119 verse 50. Psalms 119, if you start from verse 49. This particular, this Psalms 119, the psalmist is enlightening and is elaborating on the essence and on the praise of God's words. And if you read Psalms 119, you realize the weight that the psalmist lays to God's words. Of how the word of God is unfailing, of how the statues of God are his greatest delight, of how the precept of God and his ways are always upon his considerations and always upon his meditations, of how he rejoices steadfastly on following the statute of God. Or now the Lord has made him to understand his truth, even when his soul has been weary. And he says he has been strengthened according to the word of God. So these are some of the truth you find in the book of Psalms 119. But then in verse 49, he says, Remember your word to your servant, for you have given me hope. Remember your word to your servant, for you have given me hope. And then he says in verse 50, that my comfort in my suffering is this, that your promise has preserved my life. He says, remember your word, your servant, for you have given me hope. And at a point where he says, blessing is hopelessness, the psalmist comes into acknowledgement that the only true source of hope is the word of God and nothing else. And so he is praying to God and he is asking him to remember his word because that word carries hope. Hallelujah. He has the Lord to remember the one that he has, he, has, he has spoken to him as a servant because his hope can only be built on the word of God. His hope can only be fully established on what the Lord God has said. Because when the Bible says that the mouth of the Lord has spoken, that, 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 that the finality, that the signature. And you can be sure that when God speaks, that the final. When God speaks, his, his voice is sovereign. His voice is, 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 is divine. And so he says, O oh Lord, remember your word to your servant. Because my hope is only built on your word. And we live at the times when men are looking for hope. They are striving for hope in different avenues. But sooner than later, hopelessness, you know, finds its way in our lives. Because there is no, the hope of the world is not a blessed hope. In the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35, the Bible says, the light of the book of Hebrews says, that do not cast away your hope in the Lord. It says, do not cast away your, your blessed hope in the Lord, for it shall be richly rewarded. So there is hope. That the world defines as hope but there's another hope that is divine that is called the blessed hope and this blessed hope its source is only the word of god the avenue of this hope is only the word of god so he says remember your word and then he says my comfort in my suffering is this your promises preserve my life that is verse 50. now that i wanted to take thought of the word comfort there because the use of the word comfort there is derived from a latin word that means to strength to, to greatly strengthen hallelujah the use of the word comfort when he says and this is the comfort in my suffering that your word has given me life your word has quickened me up is that the use of the word comfort is it means to greatly strengthen to greatly strengthen to greatly console to greatly uplift to, to greatly to greatly you know empower and so he says the comfort that that i find even in the midst of affliction is that your word has strengthened me greatly Hallelujah. Your word has strengthened me greatly. And this is because your word has strengthened me greatly. Then I can find hope in afflictions. I can find comfort in pain. Why? Because thy word has strengthened me greatly. And this evening as we receive the truth of God's words, I want you to place that prayer and tell God, strengthen me greatly by the authority of your word. He says, this is my comfort in my afflictions. That your word has greatly strengthened me. I want you to cry to God and ask him by the reason of his word. Let there be a great strengthening that will happen this evening. As God begins, begins to pour his truth and to expel it this evening. That we will be greatly strengthened to stand on God's truth. To stand on the counsel of the Lord. And never to deviate. And never to learn to and from. But be fully grounded in the truth of God's words. So that, let's that as the final prayer. 
as we receive our Father in the Lord this evening and as the Lord, O oh Lord. The comfort I have now, the comfort that the church has, it is not in our medals, it is not in many programs, it is not in many sermons, but if only you can greatly strengthen us. Oh, by your word, if only it can be unto us according to your word, not according to our intelligence. That has a delightful praise, but it will not be able to surmount the level of obstacles and the darkness in our days. So we can ask the Lord, oh Lord, this is the comfort in our afflictions. This is the comfort that Kenya has because you are what, what you have spoken will strengthen us greatly. And the word of God is settled forever. You may be there, you, 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 need, you, need, you need strength, you need encouragement. The only true source is the word of God. So, like the psalmist, we can as well cry and tell him, God, this is the comfort in our frictions. For your word will greatly strengthen us this evening. Your word will greatly stir our heart this evening from deep within us in the name of Jesus. And that we will be fully embedded in Christ and in Christ alone. Oh, his word is eternal. His word is from everlasting to everlasting. And he has promised not even an iota of his word that will return to him empty void. But as the same way the land comes from heaven and waters the ground and gives harvest. So it is with the word of God. If only the word of God can find a prepared heart. Because a prepared heart is better than a prepared sermon. If only the truth of God was can find a, a prepared heart. Then this great comfort, then this strength can overtake and overlook every other patterns and forms of weaknesses. When the strength of God comes, it comes to strengthen us. It does not come to weaken us. When we receive the comfort of God, most assuredly, that comfort, that strength will leave us rejuvenated, will leave us quickened up, so that our anger can only focus on Jesus and Jesus alone. So that our appetite can only have Christ and Christ alone. And so this hour, there could be a lot of voices that are clamoring for attention, but we want to attune ourselves to this ultimate and sovereign, the internal voice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and he said that my sheep, they hear my voice. Because that voice is our life. That voice is our, is our life line. That voice is our bedrock. And this evening you can attune yourself to that voice. And cry to God and tell him, Lord, remember your word and your servant. For in your word there is hope. Remember your word and for your servant. For this is the comfort in my affliction. That your word has stirred us up. Stirs us up, O oh Lord, from deep within us. Stars are flesh with your word. Stars are flesh with your word. Let there be a stalling up. Let there be a stalling up from deep within our heart in the name of Jesus. And let our weaknesses be swallowed up now by the comfort of God. By the greater strength of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Father we bless you because this strength leaches everyone both on site and online. In the name of Jesus, this supernatural empowerment, this divine enabling by your word, O Lord, finds every one of us and aligns us to your internal purposes that you are then before the foundations of the world. And so we long for you, Holy Ghost. We long for you, Holy Ghost. We long for you. We long for you, Holy Ghost. Let us not miss your plan this evening. Holy Ghost. We know our place. Our place is not to lead. Holy Ghost, we know our place. Our place is to follow. We know our place. You are the spirit of all truth and your word says and you shall lead us into all truth. Into all treasures of eternity. So we leave you to do your job because your job is to lead and our job is to follow. Your job is to lead. So lead us into all truth. Lead us into all treasures this evening in the name of Jesus. Lead us into all treasures. 
lead us into what treasures Holy Ghost. Let there be a collection of divine treasures of God's truth this evening that will liberate nations, that will liberate everyone from whatever place that they come into contact with these teachings this evening. Thank you because this is the flow of your life. It is your life that is being transmitted. Thank you Lord because we don't just come for service. We are coming to meet you this evening. And we are grateful and thankful that you have always been gracious unto us to show us your heart, to share with us your heartbeat. So this evening, Lord, we acknowledge that once again, we depend on you fully for power. We depend upon you for strength. We depend upon you for grace. And we ask you, Lord, come and take us on. Come and ask Kali us on. Come and insist on us until you are fully formed in us. Until the knowledge of Christ, until the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge is fully spread abroad in our hearts. Come and insist on us. Come and equip us divinely until your anger is the only anger that is residence in us. Until our striving is only striving for your presence and not anything else. So we ask of you, Holy Ghost. Come and lead and we will follow. Holy Ghost. Come and lead and we will follow. Come and lead and we will follow. We will keep chasing after you. We will keep chasing after your truth. For your truth knows no seasons. There is power over all seasons. Because it existed before seasons came into place. So Lord, we want to acquaint ourselves with this truth, with this word that is everlasting. And we ask of you, Lord, intensify our anger for your word. Let our hearts be made willing and subject to your statutes in the name of Jesus. That nothing else will occupy us fully like your word. That will be fully dominated by the truth of your word. Ignite in every one of us, sparkle a fire to every one of us in the name of Jesus this evening. To long for your word. The Lord will not only be student of the Bible, but will be the student of revelations. That our eyes will be enlightened to see your truth. That we will see you, O oh Lord. We don't just want to go through the Bible. We pray that the Bible go through us. That your very life, that your very Zohe becomes transmitted into us. So that we can become better kingdom people that effectively execute your agenda. So Lord, once again, we come with our hearts angry and with our minds open. With our souls dusty for you. And we bless you, Lord, because you satisfy the angry. Oh Lord, and you give the angry every good thing. So, Lord, we bless you because you are our gift this evening. The Lord himself is our inheritance. And, Father, we are grateful for your truth this evening. We are thankful for grace. We are thankful for empowerment. In the name of Jesus Christ, your name be blessed. Your name be glorified. We worship you, Jesus. Paul says this in Philippians 1 27. He says, Philippians 1 27. He's lighting to the church in Philippians and he tells them, Whatever happens, conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Whatever that happens, he says, conduct yourselves. Let your conduct be in manner, be in the standard of the gospel of Christ. In other words, let the word of God, let the gospel of Christ be the standard by which you chart your course in life. And he says, whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. He says, as long as you conduct yourself in the manner that is worthy the gospel, or as long as the word of God, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ becomes your roadmap, become you, your direction, become your compacts. 
Then he is telling the church, whether in my presence or in my absence, I will know that your spirit are being built up. Hallelujah. I will know that your spirit are being edified. Your spirit are being family feast for the faith of the gospel. And he says, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. So he says, once your spirit is family feast and, and your standard become the standard of the gospel, the, 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 the path by which you take is the path of the gospel. Then he says, you will not fear any opposition. Hallelujah. You will not be, you will not be, you will not be diverted, you will not be distracted by the opposition of the enemy. For he says, this is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that, that you will be saved. He says, when the opposition comes, it is a sign, it is a proof that those that bring that opposition, they will be destroyed. But to you, it is a different sign that you will be saved. Once your spirit is built up, when opposition comes, it does not come to destroy you, it comes uh, to save you. That the mystery of God is the wisdom of God. Or now you can, you can weave good out of bad. Or now you can follow the works of the devil by allowing you to grow through the very same adversity that is meant to harm you. And this is the secular that Joseph knew. That's why he says in Genesis chapter 50 verse 20, this is what he tells his brother, that you meant evil for me, but God turned it for my good. The spirit of this man was so much family elevated, so family feast, that even when things were orchestrated against his life, he says, that you meant evil for me, Genesis 50 verse 20, but God turned it for my good. In other words, when the destruction came, it never came to oppose him. It came to save him. It never came to distract him. And then he says, verse 19, verse 29, he says, For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him. Can you tell your friend, not only to believe in Christ, but to suffer for him. And we know that this is the gospel that is not popular because the gospel that has been taught in, 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 in our days is how we should learn away from rejections and how we should learn away from whatever that brings us humiliation. But being humiliated is part of the spirit of the gospel. In fact, if you read Philippians chapter 1, he says, Paul says that the chains that came about him, those chains enabled him to advance the gospel. If you, if you study Philippians chapter 1 from verse 12, he says, Brothers and sisters, whatever that has happened to me, those chains, when they have come to me, they came to empower me to advance the gospel because once the chains befall upon him, you, the gospel was able to, to be spread. He was able to enter into different places. That is why when Paul entered Rome, he, never, he, he entered Rome as a preacher and as a prisoner. And that is how the gospel of God was able to extend. That imprisonment could have been seen as a thing to be pitied for. Hallelujah. But he used that situation, that condition to still extend the gospel of God. So when he is entering into Rome, a city that was so proud, a city that had men that uh, you know, had, had, had elevated systems to counterattack the gospel. When Paul enters Rome, even as a prisoner, the gospel of Jesus Christ was able to extend. And that is why he is saying that it has been granted to you on the behalf of Christ that you are not only believing in Christ, but you are suffering for him. And this shows you what Jesus was teaching in the Beatitude in Matthew chapter 5. And he said, blessed are you if you are persecuted and you suffer for the, gospel, for the sake of the gospel. For great is your reward. Hallelujah. So there come at times when we go through the fellowship of sufferings. We suffer for the sake of the gospel. But then he says, it is something that has been granted to you. In other words, it's something that God has appointed unto you to go through. So that in going through that kinds of afflictions, the gospel of Christ can be extended. And there's one thing, prayer I want us to make, last three. I'm, 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 I'm leading this so that we can have different prayer items as we receive the word of God. That we will be strengthened. Verse 27 is our focus. That whatever that happens to us, it will empower us at the end of it all to live in standard with the word of God. We have different standards that are influencing the way we live, the way we think, the way we chat our course in life. But you can hear us the Lord that let my life be worthy of the gospel. What is life worthy of the gospel? That whatever happens, conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Just make this simple prayer as we receive the word of God. Let my life be worthy of the gospel. Let my wife be worthy of the gospel. That the life that I live will fully reflect your truth. That the life that I live, that when people look at my life, at my lifestyle, 
they will see the gospel of Jesus Christ. They will see the, the life of God being, 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 being expressed through me. You can list this prayer as we receive the teachings of God was this evening. And ask the Lord, let your word inform my life. Let your word inform my life. Let my life, the way I live my life, be in standard with your word. Let your word become my compass. Let your word become my greatest illumination, my greatest enlightenment that informs the way that I take. That will not take paths or decisions randomly. But any decision will take, it will be prayerfully sought by the word of God, by the standard of the truth of God's words. And so you may wish to pray to God and ask the Lord, Lord, let me live a life that is worthy the gospel. Let me live a life that is worthy the gospel. Even as we receive the treasures of God's wisdom this evening. Let me live a life that is worthy the truth that you're about to share this evening unto me. And to last. So that we'll not only be earless of your word, but we'll become the doers of your word. This is our cry. Let us live a life uh, that fully reflects your truth. That fully reflects your character. That fully reflects your divine attribute. Let's live such kind of a life. Let your nature be our nature. Let your character be our character. Let your thought process become our thought process. Let your perception be our perception. Let, let, let your truth be the only truth that our life is, 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 is grounded on. And if we suffer, let it be that we suffer for the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that if at all there will be advancement, uh, O oh Lord, that the gospel may advance amidst our sufferings. That the truth of Jesus Christ may be spread abroad uh, beyond boundaries and territories, even in the midst of our sufferings. And so, Lord, this is our cry. Let us live a life that is worthy the gospel. Let us live a life that is worthy the gospel. Let us cling to your truth. Let us cling to this fountain that is forever. To this fountain that is internal. We are a grateful Lord for choosing to ignite us afresh this evening. And opening our eyes so that we can behold thy wondrous truth. We are a grateful Lord for gathering us this evening so that once again you can feed us with the blood of heaven. And so we cry once again give us this blood. Give us this blood of heaven that is beyond manna. Give us this blood that is eternal. Give us this blood that leaves us completely attuned to you and completely yielded to internal purposes. We cling unto you, Lord. And we bless you because of your generosity to share unto us your truth, to share unto us, O oh Lord, your secret. We are thankful in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless you, Lord. And we honor your name. Hallelujah. We are thankful to God that once again he has made this divine allegement to bring us into his presence so that we can fully benefit and inherit the blessing of his word. Amen. So that we can fully be partakers of the truth of God's words. So I believe everyone of us has holy expectations as we are on the lookout to see what God wants to do this evening. We want to bless God for every one of us that is that has joined us this evening. We may greet someone else to you and just welcome them to this wonderful, glorious service as we come to drink from the well that is eternal. At the same time, we want to acknowledge God for our online viewers, online church joining us from different parts of the world through social media platforms, YouTube, through Spelly TV. We want to honor God for you and we want to bless God that this evening again this fountain of God's well, of God's truth, will flow into you. And indeed, you will, you will drink and be satisfied. Amen. That will not just sip, but we will drink deeply. We can all attest that this has been a place of drinking deeply. How many agree? Amen. Seek one Jeshua too, but we are always drinking deeply from the treasures of God's truth. So we want to celebrate God for every one of us. And we want to honor God for the presence of our every mom, Eva John C.W. Can we celebrate our mom? Amen. Mom, we love you. We thank God for you. And it is a blessing and a great privilege to have you this evening. In the name of Jesus. I request that you may be upstanding so that without much ado, we can receive our Father in the Lord, Bishop John C.W. to bring God's truth into our spirit. And we want to thank God because this has always been a divine moment to be under God, divine influence, to receive secular, to receive truth that always leave us empowered and that leave us charting a course that is in line with God's truth. 
So it is another time to receive that, is worth, that which that is worthy of living. Amen. So it is my greatest honor and privilege to bring our Father in the Lord, Bishop John C. W. Let's celebrate our Father. We love you, Bishop, and we receive you with a lot of love. Alibusa. study. Uh, I'm well aware that it was not necessarily planned, uh, and uh, God is good. Let us see what God has in store for us, and, uh, so that we may grow in understanding. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bless your name. Thank you for such a great moment that you have given unto us. Thank you, Lord, because of your word, your truth. Thank you for the life of God ever flows within us. Thank you, Lord, because while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And through you, we have been brought into an everlasting life, an everlasting light, an everlasting hope, the grace of God. We thank you, Lord, because that which was hidden, even the ancient parts, through the death of your son, Jesus, the reality has been made available. It is not by works, lest any man should boast, by the spirit of truth. Therefore, Lord, we come before you by that very spirit, asking you that you may down on us a new grace, that we may grow in understanding, that we may grow in the knowledge of your truth, and above all, that we may know you and the power that is found in your resurrection. So, Lord God Almighty, I ask of you tonight, look kindly upon us and bring about the truth of your Son, Jesus Christ, by the power of your Holy Spirit. We receive your ministration tonight, O Holy Ghost, journey us into who Jesus is, and show us the Father. These things we ask in the mighty name of our precious Lord and King, Jesus the Christ, and all God's people say it. Amen, amen, amen. amen. You are the wisdom before time began. God is good. You may have your seats. Uh, you reign forever, your name is ever great. You are the wisdom before time began. Before time began. Before time began. I am very excited. I think this is the second, uh, if not, it's the second uh, service that we have had ever since Kingdom Come Conference. I want to say a quick hello to all of you that are joining us online from different parts of the world. Feel welcome. My name is C.W. John, lead minister at Share the Love Center, and I bless the Lord. So I want to believe that you had a powerful conference, powerful experience, and that you learned something. Sooner than later, you never know, you never know. Kingdom come might be three times a year, depending on your hunger. <laughs> so we bless the Lord. Thank you, thank you very much. Those of you that are watching us, via our TV station, Spirit Television. We want to welcome you from wherever you're watching us in the country of Kenya. Plus, Go Live Africa, that means we, we are able to be, we are actually live as we are talking all over the world through Go Live Africa. So, Spirit Television is here. Uh, through your phone, you have what you, call, what you call Spirit TV on the go. You can actually find that on Go Live Africa, and we bless the Lord. The gospel of Christ is being preached, and no matter what, this is what we live for, and this is what we we'll die for. Glory to God in Jesus' name. Amen. Second Samuel, chapter 6. Second Samuel, chapter 6. I like the background. So please, make sure whatever you do, you, you, reward, you restore it. Yeah, wonderful. Second Samuel. Can we, can, we, can we clap for the technical team? Today, it is after a lot of tuning and uh, some slaps here and there that you are not allowed to see. Uh, so yeah, we bless the Lord. The Bible talks about chastening. When you evade the chastening of God, you don't grow. So I told them I'll fire them after this service. And as I can see, it's, this is parables. If you know, you know. I uh, see they have redeemed their souls. <laughs> Hallelujah, I'm, I'm joking. 
So 2 Samuel chapter 6, let us begin from, yeah, yeah, let's begin from verse 1. Kindly, uh, can you serve the microphone and let's read. Let's again, read all of us together. It says, again, again David gathered, gathered together, together all the chosen, chosen men of Israel. Of Israel. 30,000. 30, and David, David arose and, and went David with all the people that were with him from Baal of Judah to bring up from thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims. So the location of this God is dwelling between the cherubims. Now, I would request you to today listen. Because uh, God wants to talk to us. And uh, this verse is very personal to me because there are things that happen out of your control. And then you just come to pray and then you realize how the Lord has given you a word that is in season. And so when I look at it, as you we are reading, light has shined on this scripture. And we are going to attempt to use that light to articulate what and decode this as a Pandora's box, to decode it and see what is inside. And I told you, listen to me. In the beginning was the word. All this is called words, but all this, they form one thing called what? Word. So this word is in words, but in actual sense, it was not in words from the beginning. <laughs> it was word. So because that word could not be understood, God multiplied this word into words so that we can still come back to word. So the word of God is not words. That's why the Bible says the kingdom of God is not in words. So it means this word never existed as words this way in the beginning. It was the word, the person. So because the person was so alien, he had to come, come, come. He, he's now, he had to, bring words to understand the word. So because of that, in the beginning, now because of that, the Bible says the kingdom of God cannot be in words. Can I ask you a question? Are these words? So the kingdom of God is not in words. It is in a demonstration. So it is in a person demonstrating in the beginning. God created. That's a demonstration. So God cannot be known by words. God can only be known by demonstration. In the beginning was the word. And the purpose of that word, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. And through him, all things, you see that? So the kingdom of God was not, the word of God from the beginning was not like this. Do you understand? The word of God was in form of a person. But because of understanding, God expressed a person in words to still come back to the person. <laughs> For example, Assume this way. Assume you've never met me. I know why I'm taking time to explain this because I don't want us to journey without understanding. Assuming you've not met me, um, give me a pen. Give me, sorry, give me a piece of paper. Sister, help my life. You know, this is my sister in the Lord. No, this is already written. Okay, I'm joking. Give me one that is not written. Sorry, sorry. My bad. Now, look here. You have not met me before, assuming, right? You've not met me. Mendo Eh. 
You've not met me. Okay? Oh, this. I see the heavens again. You know, many of you, when we say this, you think it's a slogan. So even you now, you leave and go to your house and you start saying, I see the heavens. <laughs> you cannot see the heavens and not come with revelation. The sign that you came up either is what you are able to perceive. That height has perception. So the proof that you have, your heavens are, you are opening, we will check by your perception. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man can, born, you cannot see the kingdom. That's what perceive. So it means one of the signs that your salvation is becoming complete is your ability to perceive God. Normally when I want to start teaching, it will take me less than five minutes to climb. So this, what I want to tell you is a parable. If this thing passes you, 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 you will not necessarily understand this. This is the easiest way to explain why we read our God, why we read him. But sooner than later, we shall no longer read him. We shall see him face to face. So for now, we suffer it to be so, so that he might be fulfilled all righteousness. So we read him. But I want to tell you, from the beginning, it was a word. So because no man could know that word, he had to put it in words. Now, sister, this is my letter to you. In fact, no, which letter are you talking about? You are so young to, to over, to over, what did your mom teach you? You are four, three years and you're already smiling. Now, this is a, she happens to grow up, okay? And then she comes into contact with a piece of paper. Now, she picks the paper. Come and pick the paper and read the paper. You don't even need to read it and tell us. Just read it and do as what is written in the paper. Emela fe da come laguna bella setu fa da co berato sefi. See, when I finished the conference, my, my tongues went to another realm. He, he gave me another dose. <laughs> if you are accurate in your speech, you will always know a change of tongues every six months. If you are accurate in your Christian work, every six months, your tongues must advance. Every six months, if you are accurate. Now, what have, why, what are you doing? Who told you to bring these things here? So what, I read, what is written? What is written there? So what is written there is what? It says, go to the bank and bring two black seeds. Two black seeds. And you brought them? Yes. Did I tell you? You read it. So you fulfilled. <laughs> so by what she did, she read me. But in actual words, it's me that told her. But I didn't tell her. She read what I want. I told her. See, this is what the Bible is. That this is a letter from Jesus. And if you read that letter and implement it, this is what Jesus wants to tell you. And he will not tell you by telling you because God is too great. You, you are, your frequency, he wants to speak to you. So one of the signs that he will teach you is by you reading him. And then you will get to a point, you will stop reading him because he'll be talking to you like Moses, talking to you. So you no longer, you, you, will, you, you will not necessarily need to read the word. See this? You see, this is another depth that is very dangerous to teach. You will not necessarily read it. I've had most of my greatest teachings, I didn't read them. They downed on me. As I'm in the shower, something just enters my head. And you will think, oh, see, that blue red for the whole night. I'll be lying. After reading for the whole night, Jesus will now come in the morning and tell me, that thing you read, it was for you. You thought it was for public, but that's for you. I, I, I now want to tell you what is for you. And God will give you a revelation that will hit your mind and you yourself will know it was not because of you. 
So what did she do? She read the word through words. Many words brought the word to life. So according to the word, this is what the word wanted. Two seeds. But it could not be to her. It cannot be a word. In order for this word to be fulfilled, which is seeds, words needed to be written. You understand? So words are written to complete one word, which is seats. How many words are those? Seats. Is one or two words? Seats. It's one word. But how many words? If I just wrote seats, what, what does it? Okay. I don't know if you are. How do I say some things? If, if I just wrote word, if I just wrote seats, it means many things. It means seat. It means seat. It means I sit on it. It means I look on it. So it's not really clear. So what God needed to do, because God is so big, he needed to put himself in versions, words, so that you can really read the word. And the word is sit. But it has to be go and bring me the seat. So anytime God speaks, God, God speaks very less, but his implementation is very much. If God just says sit, it will mean everything in this world. So he will need to break it down. So that you can understand the meaning. So if God comes and says, I am Jesus. If he has a conversation as Jesus, you will not understand it. He will now need to tell you the one you persecute. This version I've come so that you can understand is to deal with your persecution. So me appearing as Jesus is to deal with your persecution. But me appearing as Jesus to John, it is the book of Revelation. Me appearing to Jesus as Paul, it is to deal with persecution. Me appearing to Jesus as Peter, it is to start the church. Do you understand what I'm telling you? So I will now need to reduce myself to words so that you can understand your own journey as, as, as Eva. Your journey. I will, you will now need to read me. But in the beginning, I was not a book. I am a word. In the beginning was the word. So this word has been put in words so that you can go back to understand the word. <laughs> That's what is happening in our lives. So I have a reason why I have stopped there in, when we were reading. I have a reason why I put a full stop. Because this thing again has come on me now. The Lord told me, I want to explain myself beyond words. So this thing I'm teaching now, I have not, I have not contemplated. As I'm standing here, I saw the heavens open. And one of the signs that the fact that the heavens open is revelation. You cannot talk about open heavens without revelation. If you are deaf and dumb to revelation, you cannot talk about open heavens. There are many signs that heavens have opened on a man. First is wisdom. Does any of you desire wisdom? So when you see a man without wisdom, he's operating under closed heavens. Wisdom. Understanding. Those are systems and patterns that bring about a reality of a person that has heavens has opened to them. So to this lady, she brought seats but she read it as, go and bring me seats. This is the idea with God. God wants you to understand the words. That's why he's using words. So don't confuse words as word. In heaven, they don't read the Bible. But because we are not yet walking in that newness of life, Ours on earth is a reading. Because the Bible says, for we see in part and we prophesy in part. But I'll be it. A season will come. Jesus will no longer be. You won't read him. And he told me that a time will come, he'll now begin to talk to people by himself. We will not need to read. So you can burn all the Bibles you want to burn. Our Bible is not a book. Our Bible is a person. I need to, I'm, I'm trying to go slowly so that you can understand. You don't need to read Jesus. You can read him to a point where he is him. It's him. He doesn't need to tell you many words. Love your neighbor. Because if you love your neighbor, I will bless you. That's one realm. Oh, I don't know if you'll understand. There's another realm where he just says love. He doesn't need to explain to you, if you love, I will bless you. That's a baby realm. People that ask God to do things because of what God will do back. He will now come to you and just tell you, love, and walk away. You will interpret it. Why? Because you know him. Give, 
He doesn't need to now add the other part. He shall come back to you, press down. That's for immature Christians. He shall come back unto you, press down, shaken together, and then we put a title. <laughs> and then in the process, that's when people are giving. You are not mature. I believe that John 3, 16 could have ended for God so loved the world. That's enough. That's enough. The other part of it is to accommodate our, our weak perspective of him. He says that he gave. God does not need that. God, if he says, for God so loved the world, he's finished. He doesn't need to explain himself. That's the state of the word. The word loves. It's enough. But you see, that whoever who believes in it, that's where me and you are accommodated because we don't know that God loves the world. So he has to accommodate your weak mind and woo you and tell you that he gave his only begot. That's for you. God ended, for God so loved the world. According to heaven, that's full stop. The rest of it is art. It's for you. That whosoever who believes in him is now wooing you shall not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus, Jesus, son of David, remember me, remember me. I, I, when I read the word, there are many things I see. So these words, the idea is to take you to the word, to meet him. It is at that point he won't need to explain to you, you know, at God, give your car. You know why? What, what will you do for me? Have you had those conversations? Okay, you now remind me of the disciples. If we do this, what will you do for us having that? See, that's an after effect of what God already the fact that Jesus told you give, he does not need to explain. He's a king. Whether he does it or he doesn't do it, the fact that he's a king is enough for you to do it. <laughs> so God will now have to put himself in words. But now when Jesus comes, he says, these words I speak to you. They are not spirits. It comes back to a person. They are spirit, one person. But it's many words, but they bring to one person. They are spirit. So you will now need these words to find the spirit. Question. What if he is the spirit? Does he need words? So the words in the Bible, they are not for Jesus. That's why you see why he rarely read. How do you read yourself? <laughs> he opened a book in the synagogue and said, this scripture has been fulfilled. All these words is me. I'm, I'm, I'm who they were writing. You see, he closed the book. He says, now, from today, read me. Read me from today. When they told you, unto us a child is born, he put so many words, I'm him, unto us is me. Take me now. So you no longer need to read many words. You just need to find me. I don't know why I took time to divert that way, to explain this word. Because many of us will die with words. We are good quarters of words. The Lord is my shepherd and my strength. I shall words. But the, most, the biggest word there is the Lord. If you want, do you know the meaning of the word Lord? Let me explain it so that you know the weight of words in heaven. It's not English. That word Lord means master, ruler, owner. So if... if if the Bible says the Lord is the owner of the heavens and the earth, and it just says the Lord, do you know the word the Lord does not need to explain itself? Because when you just call him Lord, what you are saying is owner, ruler. <laughs> but you see, because of our fallen state, Adam was never reading the Bible. The Bible came to him. He says he walked to him in the cool of the breeze. Adam was never given a Bible. If a Bible was important in those days, we should have seen it with Adam. Adam was given presents. He never read him. He talked with him. And then in Moses, we were now given the bag, the laws, Torah. Moses is the beginning of the first five books. He wrote Genesis. All the first books, they're called the Torah. He, God now reduced himself to a, a writing. And then now he realized something. He says, ah, I shall no longer. I will write these laws in your heart. He's now bringing, he's removing us from a reading and taking us back to an experience. And today's Christian is weak because we read the word. 
If we ask our people, how many of us have an experience? We don't have it. That's why you behave the way you want. Because Jesus has not become a person. So one person realized it and he told us, I will no longer read it. He said, that which our eyes have seen. That's, you are not reading. This, he didn't say that which is written. No, he said that which our eyes, this thing that is written, we have seen it. He says that which our hands have behaved of the glory of God. So you would wonder why we teach with passion. Oy, some of us is beyond the writing. Some of us cannot wait for the day that we will climb and see him. Because we see him on earth. We see him. Yes, we see him. That even if you burn this Bible, it is not a sign that my Christian life will diminish. You need wisdom to understand what I've said. That even if I'm in a nation that does not authorize Bible, <laughs> I don't need to read it. He is in me. The hope of glory, all he just, just, he just needs to flow. I don't need to just read it. Thank God when I can read it. But this is for those that are in wicked nations. The Holy Ghost is not stopped by a Bible. The Holy Ghost is a person. And even if you are in Syria, you are in nations where they don't authorize scripture. The Holy Ghost is beyond it. That's why Jesus went. He says, unless I go, he will not come. So the Holy Spirit is Jesus unlimited. He now came. He can now enter your room in the night and begin to talk to you. <laughs> Why do, how do you think the authors of scripture wrote? The Bible says, under the influence, they were inspired. So it means there is an inspiration that can come to you. Why? That you can begin to carve another dimension, an inspiration. The Lord can inspire you. <laughs> so when you see nations beginning to burn Bibles, don't be panicky. Our Bible is in our hearts. When you begin to see wickedness thriving, don't panic. Our righteousness is in our heart. It has been engraved in depth. You cannot do anything to change it. We are beyond miracles. We are into the person. When you get to that place, the, the word will appear. It will not appear. It won't come to encourage you. You will not burn. No. It will come and make sure that the fire comes down. That the fire in the chamber will understand another fire. For we are baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So when that fire enters, any fire apart from that fire is illegal. So God does not need to encourage you. You will not lose. You will not. That's motivational talk. There's a place you can get to with Jesus. No matter the fire. All you need to do is close yourself in a room and wait for him. And you don't need an external factor to encourage you. You have found encouragement in the Lord. The goal is to make sure that these words become the word. The goal is to make sure that all these words become, can you tell your neighbor, neighbor, the word of God, the word, the word, the word of God. Do you, do you now have an understanding? I took time to explain. Do you, it will, be, it will be wrong for me to take all this time to explain and you, some of you are, it's okay, so? Bottom line, bro. What you talking about, bro? <laughs> Tell your neighbor, neighbor, leave the word. Don't just read it. Don't just read it. Keep that letter because sooner than later I'll be writing another one. If you do that, now, look here. You see what she's doing now? Eh? This is what many Christians do. You now create your own word. The only word that I told her was bring the seed. Now, how she goes and writes her own Bible and tells us, that say the Lord. When you, when you take the seeds, the Lord did not tell you, but you will now say, that say the Lord. That's how many false prophets rose. Leave these donkeys. I'm in need of my donkeys. Yeah. Many of us have written the word. Yes. And she's, uh, she was about to represent them. Have I explained it? For some reason, Jesus had me to deviate and explain that this is a person we are talking about. It's not a book. Jesus is bigger. Do you know the realm of the spirit is bigger than a, this book? Oh! Oh, you don't know? <laughs> ah! John just explained, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Are you aware we are not yet we don't know what is going to happen there. So if you think that this Bible is all there is to, 
to God. This is an introduction part. By the time John says, I saw a new heaven, even what he saw, he's not able to, to tell us. So it means this cannot be everything there is to God. God is so vast. He just took portions that your mind and your heart can pick for now. But when we get there, I see the world coming to an end. So be prepared. I know someone is about to say, even John, even the disciples said it and they saw it. No, my sight is, uh, let me keep quiet. It will be tamed as glory. Let's go back to 2 Samuel 6. And I'm sure it is within the context. So let's begin to read from verse 1. Kindly, if you have an, a mouth and eyes, uh, see the word. He says again, David, gather together all the chosen men of Israel. 30,000. Continue. And David arose and went with all the people that were with him to King of Judah to bring up from thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims. Mm -hmm. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Gibeah, and Husa and Heyo the sons of Abinadab, drove the new cart. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, mm -hmm. which was at Gibeah, accompanying the ark of God, and Hayo went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel prayed before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of firewood, even on harps, and on sactalis, and on timbrels, and on cornets, and on symbols. And when they, they came, came to, to Nacon's blessing floor, Uzzah, Uzzah put, put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the auction shook it. Shook it. And, and the anger, anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, Uzzah. and God, God smote him there for his error. error. And there he, there died, he died by, by the ark of, of God. God. And David, and David was, was displeased because, because the Lord had made a branch upon Husa. And he called the name of the place Peluza to this day. And David, David was, was afraid, afraid of the Lord that day and said, said How shall the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him into the city of David, but David carried it aside into the house of Obededom. They get it. <laughs> and the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obededom, the Gittites, three months, and the Lord blessed Obededom and all his household. And it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obededom and all that pertained unto him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obededom into, into the, the city, city of, of David, David with gladness. With gladness. Mm -hmm. And it was so that when they that bear the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and factories. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was guarded with a lining nepal. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with the shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael's son's doctor looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. And they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in his place, in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. And, and David, David offered, offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before, before the, Lord. the Lord. Now, I want us to look carefully at this thing. If the technical team can be kind enough to go back to the first verse, I'll be just taking a few minutes. Um, I want to show you this very important uh, story here. And we can pick something very important from this and uh, put it in our daily lives. This is a conversation about a king. 
and a specific team that without that team, he will not be able to implement his kingdom agenda. And so David is very aware because he understands that in as much as I am a king, pride will not have me look on my kingship alone. Part of the process that makes me a king are people that are within me, people that are around me. Those are the people that make my kingship authoritative, make my kingship great, make my, my kingship rule. So David now, he says that again David gathered together. This is the start of this doctrine. David is wise because again David gathered together. If you happen to be a king and you do not understand the place of gathering, you will lose every battle that God will have you go through. The Bible says that he has made us kings and priests, so you need to understand that any person that is to work for God effectively, tell your neighbor, neighbor, you have to do teamwork. You need to understand the place of teamwork. Look at your neighbor well. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you need to understand. Those of you that are watching online, you need to understand the place of teamwork. You need to know that your kingship by yourself is not effective and it has no authority. You need to know men like um, uh, uh, Jesse. Was it Jesse that always, in fact, there will be no David. Jesus would not have a name as son of David had it not been for Jesse. Who can tell me why I made that statement? Jesus would not be owning the name son of David had it not been for Jesse. Oh, we are lost. Is this share the love center? Or we did kingdom come and we said for the next year we need off. Because what the dose that you received there. There was that point that Saul was after David. And you remember that David came into the house of Saul as a harp player. So David would play harp. And any time an evil spirit would disturb the person. The scripture talks about that David would play the harp and the heart of the king would become. So David was now employed to play the harp. So actually David went into kingship as a musician. So God can use anyone as long as your perspective of God is accurate. So now David begins to play harp for the king. Then all of a sudden, you know, one thing or another, one thing or another, it leads to that conversation. David now overcomes the Goliath and all those things. And you all know what happens. And, and, and be careful because early victories our future deaths. Because when now David wins the battle against Goliath, at that particular point, the king had already promised that any person that fights Goliath and wins, what will I do? I will hand, specific promises were made. And part of those promises was the wife, was the daughter of, are we Bible scholar? So that's a conversation, right? So even if you don't know, just, just nod your head and flow with the flow. You get it? Now, so David is now accorded all those things. So David comes and asks, what shall be given to the person that slays this giant? So when David now begins to look at the manual, he starts to look at the, uh, 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 at, at the, the basics of the, you know, the war. He realizes that, oh, a woman is enticing. Oh, yes. So in, in part of that curriculum has a woman. So David takes a woman. So David knew that he did not need to necessarily woo. A woman was being given to him for free. So the wooing skills of David were not necessarily important. So David, like many of us, was saved a lot of pizza in, chicken in, galitos. So much finances were saved from David. Because all David needed to do was kill Goliath and have a cute guy by his side. So we'll never have known David from that angle. Is David, uh, 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 no one can say that, oh, David Alinikatia. David, you know, David has a sweet voice. David did not need a sweet voice. All he needed was a strong hand. If you know what to strike with, you will get things on that umbrella. If you strike well, like for example, if you strike with love, there are many things that come courtesy of love, as opposed by you striking with wealth. If you do business, there are things you can do, you can get from business. But if you love and give, you will, get, you will achieve more with love than business. So now David comes and he now realizes, oh, the conversation there is, you know, a woman will be added. Several things will be added and then, you know, all of a sudden his family, the status of his family will change. Ah. 
So assuming they were living in the ghetto, all of a sudden now, Runda, folks will be now living in Karen. Can you imagine all your brothers living a life? Tax free. The boy will never need to pay tax. All his family will be exempted. Aye. So David now looked at the record and says, that based on this paper, let's attempt. So now David comes and begins to say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that dares to defy the armies of our Lord? I believe that was an encouragement. He was not speaking because <laughs> you will speak until really Goliath is on your face. You can speak in the kitchen that statement until Goliath says, eh, uh, oh, me, 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 oh, who, me, did, oh, Liniski, you will change your conversation when David is in front. That's why I see a lot of people. You will sing and you will prophesy until the situation is at your doorstep. That's when you will know you. You, you, you didn't get the skill to overcome Goliath. You just spoke. It was not a word. It was not a person. You didn't see the person. You just had good summons. So when Goliath is finally at your doorstep, you will succumb because all you did was to speak, but not to see. You didn't see who you spoke about. So now David comes into that particular conversation. He now enters the house. And it's amazing because what was a celebration point today is a killing point tomorrow. Is it not so that celebrated the fact that the problem has left the nation? David is actually a national hero because he took down a national crisis. Goliath was not a family crisis. So even in crisis, there are realms. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, what realm of crisis have you overcome? What realm? Because according to David, he overcame a national crisis. So it means part of the docket of Christianity is to deal with national crisis. The oil is not just for pulpit here. It means we can be called to deal with Goliaths. Corruption is a Goliath in Kenya. Yes. Part of the people with that docket is David. David is a person that knows Jesus. It means the answer for corruption is with the church. Yes. But you see the problem with us as the body of Christ, we only win ministry battles. You wanted a land, you got a land. So that's a testimony on a realm. Then there are people like David who are not interested with just ministry. They're interested with the land, Kenya. They will give Kenya to Jesus. So anything that threatens Israel we will become the resistance. So they are not just fighting for their church. They are fighting for the body of Christ. Yes, that's their agenda. Their agenda is more eternal than physical. So now David brings down the army. Brings down an entire Goliath system and brings down... Please follow me because I'm building to my little story. Don't be distracted. If you ever want to understand the word of God, you will need to learn the place of meditation. You know the meaning of the word to meditate? To take in words, sieve them, and see the word. That's the easiest way to tell you. From that understanding I've taught you. To receive words, to hear words, sieve them. And as they are coming in as words, you see the word. I told you an experience I had when my father was teaching. He was speaking words, then I saw him. He stepped out, out of eternity. I saw him. I saw him. But him, he was busy speaking words. You see what I taught you before? Then I saw who he was talking about. At that point, there is no words that is important. There are no words important there. It is now him. He will now begin to talk to you by himself. So now David kills Goliath. Do you realize Goliath came with an army? Eh? So by killing Goliath, the Ministry of Internal Security sees David as a hero. So David now deals with the Ministry of Internal Security, the Ministry of Planning. He has already planned for a nation by one fight. Takes over an entire system and redeems Israel. So because of that, David now begins to start, you know, being in authority, in power. Then the king at some point, he starts feeling threatened. How is it that the same person that was a blessing to you today, you can begin to be jealous of them tomorrow? So the king begins to be jealous of, a, of, 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 of an incoming king without his awareness. And he didn't know that his jealousy took his throne. You will think that by you being jealous, you are hurting a person. You are taking away your own throne. It means God will not value any answer that comes out of you. God will not ask you, how does she look? You need, para you need wisdom. I speak in parables. How does she look? God won't ask you because every answer that you will give is a jealous answer. So God will never ask you, how does Kenya look? 
God will never have a question for you. Because he knows every answer that will come out is for me. It will power me. It will add my account. It will bless me. That was a very different case from David. So now Saul begins to pursue David. Uh, please put back my scripture. I took time to go back so that you now understand the scripture. So because of that, David now understood the place of men. So now, fast forwarding the whole story. Now David started this particular mandate. And what was his first, um, let's see according to the plan of David. What, what strategy did he use? Who can tell me? David gathered together all the chosen men. So according to this king, he starts this, what he wants to do. And you will see because the Ark of the Covenant is now the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you will know the place of men when it comes to the move of the Holy Spirit in your generation. <laughs> so David now gathers all men. All the chosen men of Israel. And then he says, those men were how many? 30,000 men. Let's see the purpose. Verse 2, quickly. And David arose and went with all. Now notice, David arose. That's not full stop. That's a what? Like many of us. That word arose is the same word you can say, arise, shine. Arise, shine. So many of us, when it's your time, you arise and you think the goal is to go alone. And so you are, you are wooed by, by small victories that have you for a result. As long as you are the one prospering, as long as your business is okay, it's, as long as it's you, so you will think that that is everything there is. And then you begin to laugh at your brother that is going through a hardship. You don't know that you are as strong as the people around you. I've been in situations where I have a problem and I know at that particular time I'm going to teach. I don't have time to pray. I will call an alarm. I say, pray, pray for me. What and to if you don't have men around you that understand the system of your expression? Those are the people that see you. Can I ask you a question? If you go for war, if you go for war and you, have, you, you enter a war zone and you're the only person with, even if you have 50 weapons, I, do you know that you are blind to some parts of your life? You, please, follow me. Are you aware that even if you have a machine gun and the bullets cannot finish, are you aware you cannot shoot this way and this way and this way and this way at the same time? So you are, there is a blind spot. When you are attacking, you have a blind spot. In fact, you are stronger when you are not attacking because you have motion, you can look. When you are attacking, it means your eyes are focused. Satan will always go to your blind spot. That's why you need men around you that see what you see. A true leader builds others greater than himself. So David now understands this concept. And the Bible says, and David arose. But notice, he did not just arise himself. He says, and went with all the people, all the people, all the people that were with him from Baal of Judah to bring up thence the ark of God. Now, look here. What was the purpose of this? So David now has a, oh, so the Lord has told me to write another letter. Please, you need to bear with me. I might be a very boring person. So I don't stand before you. I stand before God. Okay. Same person. A lot will be happening like this. A lot of things like this will be happening. Can I ask you a question? Is, are those the only things on this altar here that are carryable? If there's any, if that is not English, it is English here at Share the Love Center. I pass it. Are those the only things that are movable? Thank you, God. Please help my English. Are those the only things that are movable? Huh? Why did she take that? Because there is a confidence when you know who sent you. When you know the word beyond words, you just do the word. Do the word. Sister, enjoy your seat. Now, go to my verse. Go to my verse quickly so that we... It says that David arose and went. And, and can I ask you a question? What was the mission here? Who can tell me? Where? This is a class. So if you think you, are, you will treat 
here as a zoo you are wrong i think i'm so handsome unless you're looking at me from a handsome perspective uh, don't treat me like a monkey it's not a zoo so all of us are here to talk from back to front because the problem of now rising and going with people that don't understand you are people that don't rise you will be dragging many people thinking they are with you and they don't even understand the purpose so what's the purpose of this huh? who can tell me the recovery of the ark back to Jerusalem. so what's the mission bringing the ark back to, Jer to Jerusalem bringing the ark back to, to Jerusalem. can I ask you a question how many men did it really require how many men according to that how many men did it require to bring this ark huh? it's written there verse 1 how many men 30,000 men so David did not start by getting 30,000 men he started by understanding the mission you first understand the mission then look for the man that can support that mission. So 30,000 men were as a result of an expressed view. David already knew the purpose of those men. What was the purpose? To bring up from thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims. So David now realizes that we have, a, we, we have a work. We have work to do. So this particular work will require a group of people and even, even if I'm a king, your kingship will not save you at that moment. In fact, a king is known by the people that he kings. The people that he kings over. A ruler is, no, is known by the, ruler, by the people that he rules over. And this is why Africa suffers from this. Many world leaders are like that. They think that you, you, you are a great president because you are a president. Look at your nation. It will tell you your leadership ethic. If you notice that you took the nation when people are not suffering, and then all of a sudden people are suffering, it is a sign that you are a wicked king. You cannot see. We don't have a reflection of good from you. And this is what Africa suffers from. So we have David, we have 30,000 men, and we have the ark. So they now begin the mission. And the mission is to bring back God. According to that particular time, he used to be trapped by the ark you remember when i talked about sunday the trap so the trap of this lord was the ark so where the ark is was considered to be where god is so this ark was a trap so any people that held the ark they held god god was on their side so this ark was the mission so i can imagine how david starting the journey thirty thousand men are you already seeing or you're hearing you are you seeing i'm, I'm drawing the picture because when you start to see to be powerful he starts the journey with a 30,000 men. And then he now gets to that place and he begins to say, this ark, the difference with this ark, so if you find an ark, it will be known by the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims. Now, for you to know these cherubims, are we together? So what are cherubims? This is an arm of angelic. You need to know that there are cher seraphims, there are cherubims, there are archangels. Are we together? So Satan... Who was he? Who can tell me? It's Ezekiel. It's not guesswork. He says, Oh, ye anointed cherub. Michael? So you see that these are two different angels on two different ranks. So Michael was an archangel. Michael was involved with the presence of God. He was involved by anything dealt with ark. So that's why you notice that anything that threatened the ark, the position of the lordship of Christ, Michael responded. That's why you saw that Michael fought against the dragon. And because the dragon dwelt, you realize that this scripture, oh my God, my people, are we together? You realize that this scripture now talks about you, uh, uh, you are in Eden on the day that you were created. That's the word dwelleth. So cherubs dwelt with God. So that's why Satan knows so much more than you. He knows how to enter the holies of holies. Oh, you're not careful. You're not sure. The book of Job will teach you that. He says when the sons of God came, Satan came with them. He knew, he knows the system of how it works up there because he's a cherub. He was part of the people that guarded this ark that these Israelites are now. He was part of the, the group. And can I ask you a question? When you look at the ark, how many angels are on each side? 
An ark is re represented by how many angels? Who can tell me? Huh? Ah, who? You know, if you yawn and you don't know this, what an ark is, you're, it's, it's bad. Huh? And, okay, can I ask you, Pastor Godfrey, are you able to get a picture of an ark? Can you post a picture of an ark here? Yeah, please. I need us to be in the same picture so that we don't have 30,000 men following us. And then when it's time to identify the ark, some of us are identifying rocks. So we need to first of all find out, are we together as 30,000 men? The ark of the covenant. So you realize that the Bible says, oh ye anointed cherub. That was Ezekiel. Satan was a cherubim. So how many angels were on this ark? Please, will it take time or it is easy? And this is my problem. I tell people, please bear with me. I teach like this slowly. The shouting has never gotten you anywhere. After the sweat, the only thing you lose is water. We want to understand the word of God. Are you able to get it? Okay. Let me know. So as, as we continue, Satan was a cherub. So that means this ark, Satan was part of the team that guarded that ark. And, 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 and the amount of angels that were responsible for that, Satan was one of them. So when it comes to matters ark, you cannot outdo him in knowledge. You will now need to rise to another dimension to by the spirit of God subdue him. That's why you realize Satan quoted scriptures. Do you understand why? Because he's, he knew the ark. Oh, there it is. Oh man, technology is good. Eh? This thing is beautiful. If you notice you want to rest, please take water. I advise you, go to the outside. No, I'm not playing games. What I'm teaching here is more than your... Don't allow sleep to fool you. Just go and put water in your life. I give you time. Because if, if you don't understand this, a lot of what we teach is just motivational talk. We don't have a place of understanding. So the word of God will only rest in understanding. So this is what we call the ark. Can I have someone? Let me just carry it myself. It's fine. Come on. I want you to see where. So that's the ark. You realize how many angels represented the ark? Huh? Huh? Eh? Satan was here. And, 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 and his rank was so great that the Bible says anointed cherub. Anointed cherub. So, the, what's the word anointing? What's the word anointing? Authorized, empowered. So, Satan was empowered. So, these two cherubs were empowered beings. And Satan was in this docket. That's why you realize when now Jesus came, he told him things pertaining the ark. If you throw yourself, angels will. If you turn this rock into bread, you're hungry. So he spoke Bible because that Bible, he didn't read it. He talked with the Bible himself. So he knows, he knows the system of rule in that kingdom. He knows it. That's why you will need more than intelligence to subdue him. You will need the Holy Ghost. Because in as much as Satan knows him, there are secrets that God did not allow Satan to journey into. Part of those secrets was man. Who is man? That you are mindful of him. So man became a hidden agenda. God contemplated man apart from any knowledge that he gave. So Satan, when it comes to the knowledge of the ark, I guarantee you, Satan has enough of it. That's why you realize that Jesus could not fight Satan. He could only do what Satan is doing. Notice, what is he doing? And I'm very careful by what I've said. He says, ah, you're hungry. Turn this rock into. Do you realize Jesus didn't slap him? He did the same thing because he talked. Because Ark talks. Acts talk. When the Bible says Ark of the Covenant, the purpose of this Ark is to talk. So Jesus only had to talk to win him. He couldn't kill him. He couldn't fight him because he knew that the knowledge that this being has, he's speaking from understanding. 
But you see, his perception is not clear. He's like what the Bible says, we see in a glass form. So whatever Satan knows is still but a glass formation. But his glass view is better than your view. So he knows what took down your grandfather. He knows it. And many of us in our generation, we are not even aware of what is happening. You are just living life to live. You are talking to a being. Do you know? I think of it this way. Do you know, Mandy? Do you know Satan? What do you call? Do you know Satan tempted your great great grandmother? Same Satan. But are you aware that you are not your great grandmother? But you are still dealing with the same tempter. So Satan is so old. He knows the tricks, all the tricks, alcohol, women, men, he knows the tricks. You, you are coming into the knowledge, you are meeting a being that lives in that knowledge. What do you think is called the, no, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? At one point he was a good cherub, at another point he was an evil cherub. That's Lucifer, that tree is him. And Satan can use good things to woo you, tickets. Passports, good things. So you will need to go beyond good if you are to find God. Because Satan can give you good. Good cars, good houses. I've seen people thank God for good things. And it is not God that is responsible. Father, thank you for this boyfriend. God is not even aware you have a boyfriend. God, God, oh, good Lord. God is not aware. But you see, your knowledge of God rests with good. <coughs> My knowledge of God rests with godly. That's what is happening here. So this is what you call the ark. So what they were going to bring back is this ark. It mattered to them because the people that had this had God on their side. So 30,000 men were now deployed to go and bring this thing. 30,000 men. Bring back my verse. Okay, you can put... Oh. So David arose with his people and went in between, that dwelleth in between the cherub. Do you understand that? In between the cherubs. So what was the work of the cherubs? To guard the glory of God. To guard it. That's why you see the angels are... And then there's now what you call the seraphims. Those ones stand higher than the throne of God from Bible's perspective. Are you aware? So assuming, assuming, the word is assuming, it's not it. Please, the word is a very big assuming. Assuming God is here, the height through which the seraphim stand is higher. Do you understand? Okay, two people come. Ah, woo. Do you know what it means to appear here? Stand higher than me. And stand, stand on the same line, but higher than me. Stand here. Do you understand? Does this give you... The word is an illustration. It's not really... So do you understand? So this is what seraphs do. They are above the throne and their work is very simple. It's written in the book of Revelation. It's very simple. But the cherubs is very different. The cherubs guard the glory of God. So anytime God would want to come to a people, the glory of God was on the custody of the cherubs. They guarded God from destroying. So with the seraphims, the, you notice the cherubs have angels, wings, guarding. But with the seraphims, they have six. The Bible says with two they fly, with two they, and with two they, do you understand? So they have six sets of wings, but when it comes to the cherubs, they have two sets of wings. Because the work of the cherub was to guard the glory of God, and the seraphs were very different. It's right there. So that's the perspective. Do you understand this one? So this particular God is from the cherub's perspective. Now, Brothers, you are free to help your lives. Go to verse 3. Oh, I'm actually finished. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart. 30,000 men were needed for this mission. Can I ask you a question? How big is an ark? Did it really require 30,000 men? Huh? You will need to know things in your life. And how many people they require as pillars. Those 30,000 men, they were not necessarily to carry it. Some were drivers, some were carriers, some were seers, some were washers. Oh! So it means this ark, if this generation is to carry the ark of God, we will need to work as a team. It's 
It's the same work, even if you're a Christian in Nigeria. It's the same work, work even if you're a Christian in Kenya. It's the same act. This act is now the kingdom of God. And this kingdom should be carried by men. And whether you are in Kenya, whether you are in Rwanda, the template is the same. It is still called Ark. And 30,000 men were needed to carry the Ark. 30,000 men for this one mission? 30,000 men? Do you know that God, what God has called you for? Have you identified the number of men it will require? Or you are just like the first part, and David rose, and you did not take the people with you. So the fact that you notice you can prophesy, you just rise and start prophesying. <laughs> oh. One of the signs of a great leader, a mature great leader, is prayer men around you. If you don't know the place of men of prayer, you will die quickly because you will engage systems in darkness. Listen to me, especially when you're going for a mission. This one I want to talk to the people that live outside their nation. They are going for missions outside their nation. Now listen to me. Anytime you're going for a mission outside the nation, you are encountering a principality outside your knowledge. I repeat it. Anytime you are going for a mission outside your nation, you are encountering a principality outside your knowledge. And so David got to a point and he now realized there is Goliath. So David now needed to find a system of bringing Goliath down. Woe unto you if you meet Goliath and you do not have the technology to subdue him. So many of us, we immediately go to the beast without the string, without the rod, without the... What do you have in your hand, O Moses, that I can use? So you are going against Pharaoh. It's like a people that now wake up today and they feel they can now just approach a shrine on the basis of Christianity. <laughs> you will get there, you will hear conversations of, Ooh, we know Jesus. Who are you? So many people leave nations and they start entering different nations without understanding the principality of the nation. So you did not go with enough men to subdue that system. And please, you have to understand it for you to hear me say men. I'm not just talking about numbers. I'm talking about principalities too. Do you know that men can be principalities of a land? Yes, you cannot. Oh, you need to find Ananias and how he became a principality in Damascus. And when Saul would prevail against any city, but when he came to Damascus, a man became such a principality, he could not execute his agenda. Yes, because a man had traded with Jesus. He became a lord of our land. And so the darkness of Saul was subdued by the presence of Ananias. It's when he came to Ananias that Jesus appeared to him. Why couldn't Jesus appear to him any other land? You now see why Jesus appeared to him by noticing the life of Ananias. That Jesus had koinonias with Ananias. And he would talk to Ananias many times. And by the, this time he now came unto Ananias. So Ananias had heard. Because by the time he's telling Jesus that this man kills us. Why would you save this man? Why? So it means Ananias had heard about so. But he didn't know that he had developed capacity over the years to resist darkness. And when Saul wanted to knock Damascus, he met a man that had seen Jesus. It is not enough for you to be a lord of a Kenya. What if Satan passes through Damascus? Do you have men there that can resist him? Yes, you might have taken over the east and sub subdue it and taken it over for God, but Satan can penetrate through the north. Can I ask you a question? This is a room, right? The entrance is one there, right? Right? Can I ask you a question? What if we subdue that land and assuming there's an enemy coming and we are all at the gate and we were not knowing that all that time they were digging a wall behind him? Do you know you'll be found on the way and he will still enter? It means Christianity is a teamwork. No one man is a superstar. Stand, stand, stand the four. Stand, stand, sister. The sister, stand. Let me announce you. To, to, to the world as, as women of God, what is it? To 
the world as women of God. Now, come, come. God has given us, assuming, Moranga. Assuming. Now, Moranga has four gates. And because God has given me, I'm the one that saw the vision. Eh? I now start to say like David, David arose. Only, he did not say and, and, and with the people he went. He just arose. So, assuming that I'm manning gate one, gate one is here. This is gate one. Gate two is here. Gate three is here. Gate four is there. Now, all of you stand on your gate. Stand, man your gate. Wait, wait first. Prior to that gate, I'm manning my gate. Yes, the word of God will be strong in this place. But you will not have fully subdued Satan. Because all Satan needs to do, he will still check where is your weak point. And he will find penetration. And he will still get to you. The journey might take him 10 years longer, but he will still reach you. Now, assuming that stand on your gates and we are all marching this land. Uh, stand there, stand next to her, stand here and you stand. Oh, yeah. Just stand here, stand here. Yes, stand there. Now, assuming this, all these gates have been manned, can I ask you a question? I'm, I'm the leader. Huh? But am I the one doing all this work? That's what happens with the body of Christ. Many people do not understand the place of leadership. The purpose of leadership is building other leaders. So that assuming we need to deal with, with problems of sexual immorality, we have a God in that place. Oh, Psalms 82 verse 6, ye are gods. So the goal is to raise as many gods as possible. And don't be afraid to call yourself that one. God, God was not afraid to call you. He said, ye are gods. Yes, uh, me as John C.W., I'm a very very heavy God. You are a very heavy God. And that's why we came from God. God can only give back to gods. That's why we are created in his own kind. So God, God's idea of ruling is other gods. Oh my God, look at the ark. They, they look very nice standing there. So assuming Satan would want to penetrate here to get to this ark, there's already someone manning. That's a, that's a resist the devil. And you flee. Assuming he wants to penetrate through here. So even if you are strong in your land, you are as weak as your brother. You are as weak as your own brother. So by not empowering your brother, you are killing yourself. By being jealous about another man of God, you are, you are, you are, you are killing yourself. Because at one point, you will be looking at Satan this way to resist him and you will not have eyes here. So guess what will happen? He will penetrate through another realm and he will still get you. Come, come, come again. Hey, and this team of ladies today. Now, look here. Come, come. Turn, look that way. You look. Come, come, on, come, come at the center here. You look this way. That way. Sister, come here. Look that way. Ah, oui. Sister, Mama, that's a tune of this idea. Here you are. Okay. Ladies are complicated. If it was men, I would have already been preaching the next sermon. But ladies, <laughs> now, we are like this. So it means if Satan would think of using north, there is a northern principality waiting for him. If you think of coming this direction, there is a person. If he thinks of coming this direction, there is a person. If he thinks of coming this direction, there is a person. But woe unto you, please, sister. If we are now like this. So even if you are manning the ark, you are not accurately manning the ark. You did not understand the mission and the weight and the number it needed. You know, share the last center is a mission. There is a weight to this dream. And there's a number that is needed. And if men do not stand in their capacity, in this generation, Satan will lose. Satan will lose based on how we stand, and he will win based on how we stand. So in part of this dream, there are financiers in the vision. Part of this dream, there are warlords, men that, ah, they war in the night. They are prayer lords. They are, they are systems that will make this dream to get to destiny. And David understood the system. So can I ask you, ask your neighbor, neighbor, whatever you want to achieve, have you found your men? 
Ask your neighbor, I know what I'm asking you. Whatever you want to achieve, have you found your men? And you men that have been found, do you even know your, have you, have you, have you read the manual? The manual is the ark. 30,000 men looking at one dream. This is what we lose in our generation. We have a bunch of weak people. They, they start with you, but along the line, they start thinking about them. The focus is not the ark. These men were focused. They were willing to die for this ark. It means for us to accurately bring the presence of God to this generation, we will need strong men. That's why I'm encouraging people, those of you that want to be in leadership, go by all cost. Those of not want to be, those of you that have found a witness that you are a politician, my advice as CW, I know that many, for a long time, the church has advised otherwise. Listen to me, I'm advising you, go and become, go, 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 go. If they ask you, CW said so. Yeah, bring any doctrine that will counter that. We, we know you don't know the Bible. David was strong as a what? King. So in as much as we want great Christians, if we don't represent ourselves in kingship, laws are not governed by people that are not in authority. So when the wicked want to bring about an agenda, you will be part of the people that will be custodians to that agenda. Because you, all you did was to raise ashes. So what if Satan does not want to use ushering to come? What if he wants to use luck? And at that point when God was telling you to save like Joseph, save because of drought. You know what you are doing? You are drinking, enjoying yourself. And the Lord was telling you, look at 10 years to come. Be wise. You are not hearing. So God, you know what God will do? He will hold funds from being channeled to you because you are a waste. God cannot trust that he can use you to bring this ark. Are you people seeing what I'm trying to tell you here? The purpose of this thing is what? Ark. We have an ark in our days, the Holy Spirit. And if we are to fully express his agenda, every one of us must be standing in their, in their place. Thank you. Continue. Let's continue to our verse quickly. And they said the ark of God upon a cart. So you can imagine 30,000 men, there is a cart. Some are now putting it on a cart. Look, and brought it out of the house of Abinadab. So there are others that are carrying it out. And that was in the, in Gilead. And Uzzah, now within the 30,000 men, he now says how many? Uzzah and Ohio. Ahio. Ah, it is a cukes. Ahio. 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 The sons of Abinadab drove the cart. So, but this 30,000, you see how these people are planned? It is only today's Christians that are not planned. I've been in many places that have called people and have told people, specific people, come, let us think on behalf of the nation. They don't want. They're just busy powering their only two ministries, thinking that, listen to me, the fact that you're on TV doesn't mean you're great. Prostitutes are on TV. Murderers are on TV. So being famous is not being godly. So your fame can be growing, but the question is, is the Holy Spirit known? If we die without revealing who the Holy Spirit is, our missions were in error. Until the church understands that this ark requires men, and every man, there are men that should carry, there are men that should guard, there are men that should drive. So what if God wants to bring this ark in our days? Is he seeing drivers? Yes, there are people that are guarding it. But are there people that are driving it? Are there people that are driving an agenda that are willing to stay until they see the ark restored? Can I ask you a question? Are you aware that when that ark goes back to its rightful position, all of us gain? And when that ark is not in its rightful position, all of us lose. Even if you guarded it and you didn't drive it, you lose. Your guarding was in vain because you didn't understand the place of others. Quickly. The sons of Uva and drove the cart. Verse 4, quickly, quickly. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was at Gilead, and accompanying the ark of God. And Ohio went before the ark. 
Now, I want to show you something. What happens when you are illegally standing outside your place of training? Continue. And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments. Now, look here. Have you seen these are guards? They are drivers? They are watchers? Now we are the instrumentalists. There is worship team. They are singers. They have wood. They have harps. And all this for Ark? One mission? Christians, are you aware? Ask your neighbor, neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Ask your neighbor, neighbor. Are you aware we are on a mission? Are you aware? This thing is not motivation. It's a mission. We are on a mission. So when you see your brother losing and you are laughing. <laughs> Anointing is territorial. So yes, your territory might belong to Jesus. But you will know your territory is not the only territory alive. We have so many territories. And the goal is to man until the kingdoms, not the kingdom. The fact that Kenya belongs to Jesus is not the fact that God is happy. God wants Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, until the kingdoms with an S of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. So the fact that you are glorying because Kenya is a godly kingdom, that's not enough. We need to look at the mission. And can I tell you, the mission is continental. The continent of Africa. If one part of Africa loses, we all lose according to heaven. How many have ever done agriculture? Any, any person? Agriculture? Agriculture? I used to do it. Can I ask you a question? You know crates. You know a crate of nyanya. What is nyanya in English? Tomeros. You know tomeros? Now, tomeros. Tomato. You know tomeros. Now, if you take, if you, if you fill a crate of tomeros with nice tomeros, and then you make a mistake and take one tomero that is already oozing, with a sensation. You know a sensation? You take one that is oozing with a sen sensation. And then you ooze that sensation among others that don't have that sensation. Do you realize all those that are standing, they don't have the strength to take away the order. The order is more stronger. Oh, you are not understanding. It means sin moves faster than righteousness. So in as much as we are glory, Africa has 52 tomatoes. You know tomatoes? You get it? In nyanya, 52. What I'm trying to tell is this. If 51 nyanyas tomatoes are good, and one tomato is bad, and that tomato happens to be Kenya, all tomatoes are bad, folks. Y'all get it? You get it? Yeah, if you don't know that English, you don't know English. What do you know? That's what is happening. So we are busy laughing at our brothers. And you don't know that sooner than later, you are part of the tree. You are within. You, what is holding Africa? You are part of what is forming Africa. So when you see a nation losing in corruption, don't be quick to say you are corrupted. You are, sooner than later, that corruption will be exported. And one bad tomato will spoil all the rest. Do you realize it's not all good tomatoes make bad tomato good? Think about it. But in as much as you have 51 nice tomatoes, the, the, the one bad tomato is not threatened. Let's say, gay, 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 gay. Boy. Ooh. Ah, ooh. Because in this world, bad moves quicker than good. In this world, not in that world to come. In this world, bad moves quicker than good. You might be asking, man of God, why are you sharing this? What is this ark? The kingdom of God needs to be driven. It needs acts. It needs, it needs, ay. Jesus understood this system. That's why even in as much as he was a son of God, you still see him going with 12 men. Can I ask you a question? He is the son of God. Why, why men? Answer me. You, you are a son of man and you still don't know the place of men. He is the son of God and he still de receives the grace to empower 12 men. Because he wanted the nations. I want to ask you, oh man of God, are you training national men? Or you are training people to serve you? 
What has your training accumulated to? It is, it is a sin in this kingdom to be trained and not trained. Can I repeat it? It is a sin in this kingdom to be trained and not trained. For example, this lady is a, is a, is a cook. Okay she, okay, she says, okay, cook is not, she's a chef. It is a sin for her as a chef never to make another chef. It's a sin. Whatever the field God has given you to conquer, the proof that you have conquered is not known by your bank account. The proof that you have conquered is known by another man. Men is a proof of your conquering. When God wants to win a battle, he will add men. Make sure that you siphon only those that see where you are going. Don't focus much on the number. Focus on sight. So go back to my little scripture. Hey, these people are fast. Today, the threat was real. But the, the, it's, the ban has not been lifted. He said, David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord all manner of instruments made of firewood, I mean made of firewood, even on harps and on pastry, uh, sa, that one, on timbrels, on, and on cornets, and on cymbals. You know cymbals? Cymbals. Verse 6. Can you imagine all this? And when they came to Nachos, threshing floor, they now got to a location. How many men have made this a reality? 30,000 plus men. And now I can imagine the joy of getting to the threshing floor. In that place when we are about to win, some people in the group do not understand their purpose. Oh, and you don't know your mission can be delayed because of who's around you. So it says that when they came to Nachos, threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand. Now, can I ask you a question? Prior to this, do you remember the job description of Uzzah? There were two men. Huh? Mommy, do you remember? Yeah, my young daughter here remembers. God bless you, little girl. May you be a teacher more than your father in Jesus' name. I give you the grace to teach. Teach, little girl. From Sunday school, may you teach in Jesus' name. What I will never see, may you see. In Jesus' name. Can you take us back to Uzzah? Was it in verse 4? What was the job description of Uzzah? Verse, huh? Let's see the job description. It says, uh, Gilead and Uza and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drove. So they had a clear job description. Tribe, not God. In a vision, if you don't understand your place, you are killing the dream. You, you see, when you stop doing what God has called you to do, you are not just hurting yourself. You are hurting the nation. When you start a ministry and begin to do funny things, you are not just hurting yourself. You are hurting a nation. So Uzzah was very, now let's see, Uzzah now stops driving. He says, and Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it for the oxen shook it. Now can I ask you a question? Was there anything wrong with what Uzzah did for Sayo? Was there anything wrong? Let me make you understand. Sister, let me make you understand. Today is sister's day. Sister, come. Let me see if you have wisdom. Now, this is your job to hold this. This is a, this is a type of user. <laughs> I already told her her job is to hold this. Do again what you've done. That's what Uza did. Now, can I ask you a question? Was there anything wrong with what Uza did? According, for God's sake, we are all money. But can I tell you, don't man, don't become a prophet if there's no calling. Don't start functioning in an area where you have no authority. 
I've seen many people come and say, GCW, put on me what you have. He said, what, what do I have? And they say, I want to teach like you. I said, the problem is not teaching. Have you find out, found out whether God wants you as a teacher? I'm not teaching to create teachers. I'm teaching to create kingdom men. So the goal is not for me to make you a teacher. The goal is for me to make you what God called you to be. But you see, Uza, and in our generation, we have a lot of Uzas. See, I don't know what this, what eats you? Stay on your lane, bro. Stay on your lane. There is another person that support. Do you know what would have happened? If Uza, stop, if Uza would have allowed it to fall, there would have been another person responsible that God would have smote. It was not supposed to be him. So Uza died another man's death. So it means when we fail as Kenya, don't think all of, yes, the repercussion might be for all of us, but there are people that will be smote because they never stood. The question will be, ah, who told you you are naked? He said, it is this woman that made me eat. He comes to the woman, woman, who told you you are naked? And then he goes to Satan. You, you told these people they are naked. But in as much as the system worked for them, do you realize the, the, weight of, the weight of the problem that God brought on Adam and Eve, it was still recoverable. But what he gave to Satan was still there. The curse he proclaimed to Satan, to serpent, you, you, for all you will pay. But when it comes to the woman, you just say, pain, when you're giving birth. So it means the woman was supposed to be smiling while bringing forth, you say, <laughs> oh, no, ma. Get out. I like how you look. That was God's plan for birth. But today you see when you are crying, it's because of you that you actually brought tears to yourself. Penny. It was not supposed to be a painful process. But you brought me. Why? Why? It's because of that sin. But when he, what he told man, man is now going to toil and will never have peace in his toiling. God's intention was for man to just rest and get what he wanted from Eden. But when it comes to Lucifer, you, he brought a curse that he cannot be recovered. If you look at it from a point of snake, snakes still too today don't have feet. If you, even if you look at it from a little point of snake, serpent or snake, they have no feet. So till today, they are down there. If you look at it from the point of, it means at the lowest pit of hell, Satan belongs now. So this is what Uzzah would have done. Uzzah would have let it, he would have stayed on his mission. And even if it would have been delayed, God would have found who should have been there. Question, could it be that you are holding another man's dream and thinking you are doing yourself justice? By not exposing the right people, you are killing the right people. By seeing a great person and not doing what it takes to bring greatness out of them, you will think you are becoming, it's like I used to stay in the land of Kamba, sorry. Then I now realize, there, if you make it, it is by the Holy Spirit. You are designed to beg and they have been comfortable. We have one of them here. Do it. Come on, you? They, if you go to that land, they are designed to beg. No one is designed to be a giver. So I used to go there and I realized, everyone is just designed. You say, You ain't. Kill everything. Nenge is the, is the highest form of verb in that land. Give me, give me, give me. So I now realize that scripture is not in that land. It says the hand that giveth is more blessed. So their blessing is on a minimum level. Sorry. It's, your, it's, it's God's fault. This generation, the cart is falling. God is asking, who should have been there? In every mission, men are required. There's a scripture that the Bible says, and they grew in favor with both God. If you ignore the place of man in every vision, you have lost the place of authority. 
I came to know there are two realms of authority, spiritual realm and physical realm. Many religious people teach authority from a spiritual realm. So in the realm of the spirit, you are a prayer guru. But with men, you've not read the spot that says he will even make your enemies. You see, when God wants to fulfill a kingdom agenda, even enemies are needed. You need to ask Pharaoh to save Israel. Pharaoh was part of the plan. So he now says Pharaoh had a dream. <laughs> How many other great men would have dreamt? Godly men. Joseph was in the land. Why not give Joseph the dream? He didn't have the resources. My people, do you understand what I'm telling you? You will only dream based on your ability to respond. He didn't have the resources. And according to God, God will not go by way. God will go by implementation. So he knew at that particular level, Pharaoh had the resources to bring the dream to pass. Then now Joseph had the interpretation. So for Israelites to be saved, all was needed is what? Resources and interpretation. When those two things come together, change happens. Could it be that you are saving? Because now, look here, when you stop looking at what you should be looking at and start looking at this, your focus now comes here. So when God now asks, what picture played there, you won't remember because you are focused on something else. I've seen people that started as great men of God and then they now went to nations and they saw how prophets prophesied accounts and they stopped being teachers. I consider teaching very great. I consider teaching very great. The teaching spirit. Me, if you ask me as John C.W. in ministry, I value the teaching spirit because only a teacher graduates men. So, Uza, stay in your lane. Ooze out of your calling. Lastly, and took hold of it, for the ox shook it. Verse 7. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uza. And God smote him there for his error. God calls it a what? What, what does God call it? No, read, read up there. For his? What's the error? They, they, that man has right to argue with God. He can bring his case. He say, Lord, for God's sake, I'm a good man. I give to charity. The perspective of Christian today. I mean, uh, a person going to heaven today, you think that just because you give to charity. You might be giving to charity, and God did not call you for that. So according to God, you are a failure. You see, with God, you are only successful when you are in the place of his will. Can you, can, you, can, you, can, you, can you understand that? With God, you are only successful when you are in the place of his will. God is not interested with the fact that you became a billionaire. God is not interested. God is interested with, did you follow the manual? Did you stay where I called you? Were you driving the cart or carrying it? Which one were you doing? Did you check from heaven what I designed you to be? And please listen to me, my generation. You know, some of us live in this world as if we are, we are celestial beings. You think that it, it, it won't come to an end. So you just live as if, ah. You will be shocked when you make it there. And the Lord will look at you and say you are a waste. Ay. There is an error to your life. Yes, you did this and you did that, but there is an error. According to you, Jesus, I knew. What Jesus was doing, I had already authorized him. You were on a mission field in a wrong mission. You went to America to start a church. You went to America to start a? You know on what account? So that you can have offering as dollars. And then you begin to use and say, but you see, Lord, you told me to go into the world. Yes. Which part of the world should you be going? Can you ask your neighbor, neighbor, have you found out where God wants you? It's a strong question. Have you found out where God wants you? Have you found out where God wants you? So you see what God did? God smote him there for his error. And there he died 
Can I ask you a question? When they left the mission field, we are actually done. You can close your Bibles. When they left, don't, don't leave this, don't close this one. When they left the mission field, huh? they, there was clear, it was very clear. It was read out, you do this, you do this. Can I ask you a question? Do you realize that what was to come and be a blessing to them became a curse unto us? The same person that was going to redeem Christians, Judas, died by that redemption. So it means if you don't know how to handle the kingdom, you can be a casualty in that kingdom. I've seen many people. If you don't know how to handle God's will, you can be a casualty in that way. The same act that was coming to reveal the strength of God killed a man. On the strength of what God smote him. And there he died by the ark of God. Can I ask you a question? Was Uzzah supposed to come back from the mission or die? He was supposed to come back. Did he? So it means success is not automatic. Kingdom success is not automatic. It lays on your willingness to implement God's agendas. Verse 8. And David was displeased because the Lord had breached upon Uzzah. And he called the name of the place Perezuzah. To this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, How shall the ark of the Lord come to me? Now look at the problem. It means Uzzah was a driving force. Woe unto you if Satan touches your pillars. Even a whole king can be in distress when your team is... Now listen to me. Every person, all leaders listening to me from different parts of the world. When you don't support your team, you prolong your success. You are the wisdom before time began. When you don't build the people around you, you postpone, you delay your wilderness. You suspend your success when you don't train others, when you don't build others. You, sus you postpone it. Why should a person that has 30,000 men, Kathy, why should a person that has 30,000 men ask such a question? It means you can have men, but not skill. When it comes to skill, these were the men accustomed to carry the ark. Skill. So yes, like here, I have a lot of sons. David is back there, our engineer. So, um, um, for, even if I love you, like... For example, Pastor Kevin, you know I love you, my bro. But can I tell you, you are useless to me back there. Sorry. It means your use, I've taught you this before, your use is less. It's not an abuse in Africa. You're just, but I love you. That's with God. God loves us. But on use, it's differently expressed. Expressed. So David back there is now useful. His use is? But that same David in front here where Kevin is, <laughs> Oi. you will speak Sheng until you. Because his use is less here. So he's as strong as where God wants him. That's what you need to know. You are only as strong as where God wants you. So now David asks a very great question. He says, how shall the ark of the Lord come to me? By, by smoting one man? Why don't you just replace him? One man, a whole king, ask himself that question. Then that tells you Uzzah was so important because of what he represented. Can I tell you? Listen to me as you go home and those of you that are home. If you don't find your place of belonging in any vision, my advice, don't submit. You need 
the purpose of true submission is accurately being able to discover your place of service. And when you can't see your place of service, my advice, even if it is here, my advice, my advice, if you can't see how you will add to the team from where you are, that's a sign that you're in the wrong place. Because these 30,000 men, they added to the ark. So if you can't see how you add to the ark, you're in the wrong place. You may wish to be on your feet. And the people in front of the camera, you may wish to care in regards to the camera. How shall the ark of the Lord come to me? Could it be that this is a question that God is asking? Are you for us? Are you the one? This is the same question. Or should we wait for? How shall these nations be given to me, Kenya? Who will come for us? Our strongest men are being wiped out. And no one is aware. And we glory when we see someone error. And you don't know that your error. The error can be done in America. But the effect can be manifested in Kenya. You reign forever. Your name is ever great. You see now something has happened. That's my young man, Felix. He, 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 in this, I, I can't go back there and pick a microphone. So I need him to bring me. It, it's just a little way of understanding. But now the king asked a question. Kaleche, how shall the ark of the Lord come to me? This is a very terrible question. Do you see the weight of this question? How shall I win Kenya to me when Uza is dying, when Uza doesn't know his place? Could it be that you have buried men that should not be dead? And when God looked, I believe that there are deaths that, for lack of a better word, that pain God. Uza's death pain the king. He said, ah! Who will drive this cart? Can you imagine specific men that are driving this cart in our days? And then Satan just cuts them short. Do you know what that means for the nation? Just imagine some of them. Just imagine. I don't know who you can imagine. Imagine. Look at me. I know you don't want to imagine. Imagine specific men that are driving this cart. Carrying the kingdom of God. And then you just wake up in the morning and hear that person is not there. Do you, know, do you know how long the recovery process? Can I ask you a question? Have you ever realized how long God takes to build a man after his own heart? Do you know what it takes? Oh, my Lord, my Lord, my there are some oozers that have left the faith. And when God looks at the nation today, be it in any nation you are, they are part of the system that should play in the recovery of the land. This is not emotions. So journey, journey well, journey well, journey well in the spirit. Great men and women that would have stood in the place but they left their place of authority and they started looking at things that Jesus did not even send them to look at you are the wisdom before time began before time began do you know what it takes to bring this ark Are you not aware that it will take you for God to work the work that he wants to work in your land? You think church is just a place you come because it's a service? Do you know the plan that God has? Do you know what your part is in that plan? You read Jeremiah and says, I, I know the plans that I have for you. But my, my question is very simple. Do you know your part in that plan? Uza, stay in your place.
We need a lot of users. I told you that this kingdom is not for superstars. It's not a one-man show. Church, hear me all over the world. This is not a one-man show. You are, your ministry might be winning, but the church is failing around him. Because we didn't know the place. We didn't understand that you're on the same mission. So we are busy fighting each other, killing each other, looking down on each other. Let us just stay in his place, O oh Lord. We didn't understand the mission. The mission. The mission. I want to ask you. The Lord is crying. Are you, do you understand the mission? You left the faith a long time ago. On the account of your little prayer. Let us just stay in his place. O oh Lord God, we cry. You are valuable to me when you're in the place of your calling, not results. Let it's not the results that you... Oh, place. listen to me. Did you, did you, do you not realize that there was a time Saul, Saul, Saul was given a mantle and he was given an order to execute a divine judgment. And so when he went to fight, instead of him killing everything, he brought, he brought animals. He brought things to, to, back to his place and he thought that that was going to please God. And the prophet came to him and asked him, you thought that this mission was for results? You thought that the purpose of ministry is for, to prove how much money you can have, how many cars you can drive? You thought that the purpose of marriage is sex? You think that this is why we do it? You thought that the purpose of, oh my God, you are lost. You are lost. The deepest purpose of marriage, in case you are listening to me, the deepest realistic the most kingdom realistic purpose of marriage is unity. It's not, it's not even intimacy with man. It's unity. To prove of how the word and the spirit function. So the day you plea for a divorce, you don't understand what you are doing. You are claiming that the original template from heaven on marriage does not exist. Oh Lord, keep us. Do you understand your... the plan? Keep us in your plan. Jesus told them that you do not know of what spirit ye are of. The absence of knowledge is the presence of darkness. A lot of what we do is because there is absence of knowledge. Oh Lord, grant that we stay in the praise of our assignment. Fale. Let us Fale. stay in his place. Aye, 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 aye. Fale. Let us stay in the assignment. Fale. Bring us to the assignment, O oh Lord God. Pia, pia, ya, 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 Keep ya, us ya, ya. in the ordination, O oh Lord God, and let us know the path. Ya, 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 ya. Let us not serve any other purpose apart. The Lord the is Lord reminding the body of Christ we are on the same mission. It's not a fight of the greatest, it's a fight of the kingdom. It's a fight of thrones. It's a relay. It's not a hundred meter dash. We are all running. Amen. 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 So we love Ki bende farasu sa fili metali Sa me kovelon sa kavi Bedembe Lagino menipo Skote be Randi nondela Hindu pela You know, hear me as you're praying you know, you know what the problem of Judas was? And a lot of Judases will be seen If we don't understand our part in the picture Judas forgot his place and you see with God, God will always give, including Judas, he will give you time, including Judas. Don't think that Jesus was not aware who Judas was. 
but he will not destroy you, he will not stop you from the plan so that you yourself will never say you never gave me an opportunity. In the team, Judas was a clear indicator. He was a success point in the team. But his pride couldn't let him. His, his pleasures of the flesh couldn't let him. His selfishness couldn't let him. One of the things, if you, if you ever want God to use you, one of the things you must overcome is self, self. Pleasures of the, of the flesh. He will keep you in perpetual bondage. Because the day you come out of it, systems will begin to flow through you. But you have no understanding. You are like him without wisdom. He that dares to find a way without knowledge. He that seeketh not understanding. Your perception is not godly. And you claim to see having half eyes and see it not. Oh Lord, let me not forget my praise. Ah, yeah, yeah. Let me not forget my praise. Give me your ah, yeah. Give me your prayer. Yeah. Give me your original Please. intent. Ah, yeah. Give me your Lord. Yeah. Your internal purpose. Ah, yeah. That which you ordained for me before the foundation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep us in your ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, to your realm. Yeah. It's just ha ha. ha. In that realm of the spirit, if I tell you the interpretation of that, God. the Lord is crying and saying it is time it to God. bring back divine order. But in the realm of the spirit, it is, it is, it is interpreted as ha ha. Yeah, yeah. Gentle <laughs> The question is very simple. There is a restoration of the ark in our generation. Do you know your place in that restoration? Do you know what you are supposed to do? What you are born to do? Do you know the importance of what you are born to do? Have you, find the, have you found the purpose of your life? My people, you know, you need to you know when i speak like this i cry i cry i cry for real i cry if you know the weight of my words have you found yourself in this kingdom have you found yourself i cry for my land i cry i cry i cry for kenya i cry i cry for africa we cry Many lefe do ya doko post. Baraku rendeska rapula antuski da vele manu ya press fedogo beri. Dola ya pire sa fili ya kombai sketo beleke. Sadi vivando to balas. Idu bredi. Ali kombi to lazan. This is a this is a call. This is a call. This is a kingdom call. This is a kingdom call. Oh, we answer to the call, Lord God. There is a call. We answer to the call. God wants to bring the ark to the continent of Africa, to the nations of the world. But there are men that are required to carry this to destination. Uza, don't lose your life along the way. Uza. Hey, 
Legend of a Romo Make a prayer. You don't need to shout. You can shout whichever way you are comfortable. Make a prayer in your heart. And just say, Lord, in this mission, show me my place. That's the prayer I want you to pray. Lord God, in this mission, show me my place. In this kingdom mission, show me my place. Show me my praise, O Lord. What am I supposed to do in this mission? Show me my place. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Pray within your heart. Pray whichever type of way you want to pray. But in this mission, show me my place. In this kingdom mission, Lord, show me my praise. In this kingdom place, show me my praise. Let me not miss my cause of name praise. Let me not miss my praise of a son. Lord, show me my praise of a son. Show me my praise of productivity. My praise of relevance. My praise of fruitfulness. My praise of effectiveness. Show me, Lord, I can't. feed. Palusa Kavilansana. Tito Sasani. E como su felo palosi taka, e de mini jule pro sacavala, e pra tosa do velam vesti safeni, pra rata, e de velambo se coza galevara, e de velambo noje joveli pra satalaka, e gembe no de velam preso safaka. Jombe June foroni malava naida, kele kambe zegi vikunto paras, sande belange vruza hata demokadi, kano zadampos kovela izavata, sagi vembro sakomento pala, abidu kele vato saipa, tape jumbo skapeli sahatavat. Aki beno sa devele me kodo So sa i printo Makabane Edem bela so ske valakai Show me a ya Chonto pras kameda Let me know for get my praise Show me a ya Let me know that I come from my praise Ombe se vaka Holy Leje gi adaman dele ni fe kobo Show me a ya Su se ponte falatamana Azendo levana, ekumbo juu zeze valakapa, ense beno falanto praskaya ba, esada ya beno beno asali, jento posili, apa ya tabi, give me your praise, give me the praise of assignment, give me the praise of my ordination, give me something of your purpose. Do not permit me to die bad. Do not permit me to die less. Do not allow us to be distracted. Oh, we this capel of falsos is a metapel of araka. Come on, see a belly metan. Then can no sire. Show me my praise. Show me my kingdom as I He wants, he wants now to write. He wants to write something in your heart. So wait, wait for him now. Wait for him. He'll give people a witness.
Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We apologize for the selfishness and we understand the bigger picture. We are part of a kingdom team. We see the bigger picture. A picture bigger than our own visions. A picture bigger than our own ideas. Bigger than our own ministries. Bigger than our own thoughts. Bigger than us. For we see you. For we see you, Jesus. We see you, Jesus. We see you. We see you, Jesus. The Lord says that he expects us to come up hither. That's what he says. That from where we are operating from is still low. He's waiting for us somewhere. And when we finally get there, knowledge will be released. When we finally get there. When we get to that point where he can speak without barriers. He will not say like in the days of old that I have many things to tell you but you cannot bear. The day you will bear you will see him. Father we thank you and we bless you. We ask that you bless your word tonight. 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 Bless your word. Bring us back that ancient knowledge. To you it has been given to know. Give us that kind of knowledge that cannot be read. It can only be given. Show us our place of victory in the bigger picture no one man wins remind us lord every single day bless your word lord bless your word in jesus name in jesus name and all god's people said amen the young are praying the old are praying the kids are praying all of us are praying and we are coming into the full knowledge of God. Please, I ask of you, especially this word that has been spoken here. I rarely say this. I don't even think I do. But please, this word that has been shared here tonight, share it. For some reason, I have a witness in my heart. Share it. You don't even need to share it from a video. If you are threatened much by my face, just put an audio or just hear what I've said and then re-say it yourself. Record it and send it out. We are not interested with credits. We want to put this word out there. But if you can, share it. A lot is being changed in our generation. A lot of error is coming to a dead end. I pray that God will give us the grace. And now may the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, causing his face to shine upon you. Being gracious unto you both now and forever. Be filled with the knowledge of his spirit. Walk in the light of his path. Shine by the power of his truth. May God bless you. May God restore us into his everlasting life. That we may know him and the power that is found in his resurrection. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. we we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is what we see on Sunday, first service, 8.30 to 9.30, and second service, 10. God bless you. My name is John C.W. Looking forward to seeing you. We love you. Bye-bye.